the music that people like nowadays, I'm like the odd one out. I'm yeah. like, oh, I want to sing Aretha Franklin, not like yeah. Dua Lipa. <laughs> Every, everywhere we went, any bar, restaurant. I remember I got, we went out for an Indian once and my mum stood me up on the seat and was like, okay, and now sing. Wow. I was like, mum, everyone's eating the meal. Nobody wants me to sing. Wow. I used to blow up my candles at my, on my like cake when I was eight years old and be like, please, I just want to be a singer. Come on, <laughs> I'm never doing a solo gig ever again. <laughs> There's some men I've met in Burnley. <laughs> Can I play your guitar? Through Wonderwall. I'm a good singer. Can I sing with you? Oh, give us another. Come on, mate. One more song. 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 Right, hello, welcome to the One More Song cast. We're back for another episode. I think this will be episode two in our second season. So we've got a guest with us today. It's Jodie Woods Hi. from Burnley. Should yeah. we talk a little bit about how we how we how we met? We're not together. How we, how we met? But, yeah. But you know, we. Uh, um, I was doing a gig in Padium in Burnley. Is it is Padium Burnley? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And um, it was sort of, it was a bit of a strange gig, weren't it? It was on this elevated, yeah. like, almost like a so massive weird. stage above everybody. Yeah, there was like the garden bit where yeah. that everyone was drinking at, and it was like a bloody two mile walk up yeah. to the stage. Yeah. Yeah. And you couldn't get, you had to go like all the way around the building yeah. through the car park just yeah. to get your stuff on yeah. the stage. It was and like, you're almost like a, like a god up there looking down. Yeah, it was so I had weird. to angle my speakers like down, like facing down to me. It was a bit of a crazy yeah, one, but it was a it good was, gig like. Um, it was, you had, you had a great time. It was all right, wasn't it? I, was, uh, I was enjoying it that day. So yeah, it was I was all watching right. one of your last episodes of like you, you gig nightmare or something. And I was <laughs> like, that was my gig nightmare. It was the worst gig of my entire life. Yeah, it was so like we, the hottest day of the year. I was so <laughs> Sweating so much, it was awful. We had to walk across like this grass verge to get onto the stage bit, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, and I was wearing heels, yeah, and yeah. it was like like just steps to down to yeah. it. It was so scary. Oh, I hated it. It was the worst talking thing about that. You, you know, like I I've got older. I just can't deal with heat anymore. I figured out I've actually had to bring a change of clothes to every gig, or if I've got two gigs in a day, I have to go and shower no, in between. That's I can't what deal with it. Like, my hair was like dripping because I'd, I'd had to carry everything on my own. Usually, I have a pianist with me who does everything. Liam, yeah. I love him. He does everything for me. I just sit and look pretty, but I had to carry everything on my own. I'm so glad I had you because <laughs> he put like all my speakers on the stand. Because I was just, I was dying. Was, was you on awful. the phone? Was you on the phone to your dad or somebody who was uh, helping you? No, sound one check. of my friends. Because oh, yeah, yeah. um, it was his, I had to borrow somebody else's yeah, equipment as well, yeah. which is so much worse than not <laughs> yeah. having your own stuff. So he was like telling me what to plug in where, and it was just so <laughs> way too much. I had Video to have a call. Can you, yeah. see? Can you see? Can you see? No, just angle your like. camera. You angle it the wrong way. Yeah, he was like, "Turn it, turn it round." I was like, "It's turned round." He was like, "No, it's not. Your camera." You, I had like a phone case at the back of it, so he couldn't see anything. <laughs> it was so difficult. Have you been back there since? So, no, no. I think I've got one in. I want to say September, but I can't remember. But I think that will potentially be inside. But I've never been. Inside, I don't think so. I'll be allowed back. It was so bad. Oh, no, no, it was, it was good. good. It, was, it good. was good. I just remember, like, like we were saying on the way down, like you'd uh, you were doing a song, and then you was like, "Nah, not doing this one." Halfway through, you just stopped <laughs> it. <laughs> I do that so many times. I'll have like a full on gig, yeah. and then I'm like, if a song comes on and this is just not the vibe of the room, I'm like, sorry guys, just pretend I didn't sing that. Let yeah, me do yeah. it. Like, <laughs> That's brave, though. That's brave. <laughs> I, I stick it out, and I'm just like hating it, but I stick I it out. I could see the vibe just going down yeah. and down. I was like, right, this is not yeah. it. So I, I was like, no. I think that's what's lucky about us with acoustic. A couple of times, I've just been able to go right. This clearly isn't working, and find it, think about a song while I'm playing to go yeah. straight into mm. it. You can't do that with See, backing tracks. I love doing solo gigs, but they're so, they're like, obviously I usually do, I have a pianist mm. with me. And if I don't like the song, I'll just be like, let's just like cut it in yeah, the next yeah, chorus. Yeah, yeah. And then you just can go on somewhere else. Like, yeah. it. <laughs> it's so much better, but yeah, there's pros and cons to solo yeah, yeah, gigs. Yeah, right, especially because right. I can't play anything either. So uh, it's like yeah. difficult. <laughs> right, so we always start our podcast with the same question. Um, what does music mean to you? Oh no, that's such a hard question. Um, it's a, it's a broad question, it's but broad. it hopefully just gets us opening a bit as to why you're inspired to do what you do. Maybe you know. I think well, to me, my kind of what what I love and what I've always loved is like classic soul, like pure. Yeah. Do you know like the Arethas, the James Brown, yeah, everything yeah, like yeah. that. So and that that's because of my family, like million percent. My dad's always been into like Northern soul, and it's always been the like. 
a thing in our family where we all love soul and like blues and jazzy kind of stuff. Um, but I think I, it just means it's just everything in it, really. Absolutely. I feel like when I meet people, I work in a bar as well, like part time. And when I meet people who say, oh, I've never really been into music or it's not that much of a big thing. I'm like, how the, what is wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> how do you deal I with that? I can't process this? it either. I can't even go a day without like. I can't go on today if my earphones would have died I would have been done for I would have been in the worst mood ever I can't go two minutes without listening to music it's crazy it is weird isn't it when people say yeah I'm not really into music oh I don't yeah. get it it's like saying I'm not really into eating food or, yeah. <laughs> or staying alive I was, on a, I was on a date once like completely off the subject and he like started the thing out with he doesn't like music right. and I was like right it's not going to work, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go like backdoor boogie out the door, honestly. Yeah. I just need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me just... I, I'm, someone's calling me. Let me just leave. <laughs> More from a male perspective, this, although that's probably a bit sexist with the women's football and stuff, but it's like when you say, meet a, n- a new guy... A new guy, a like new somebody you, you spot, and he's like, "Oh, I'm not." You, you're trying to start a conversation. He's like, oh, "I'm not really into football. I'm into rugby." And you're just like, oh. right, "I'm lucky in that sense that I go, oh, like legal rugby. union, yeah, union, yeah, right? Yeah. I'll see you later." <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> rugby and football and yeah, no. everything other than music, even though music's everything. I've got literally no idea. <laughs> So growing up around music then, like you say, you've been inspired by um, all the retro soul music and stuff. So obviously that must have come from somebody. So yeah. who was your main influences and what were you listening to around the house when you were growing up? So when I was, I don't, even before I was born, my dad and my uncle, it was always in an, a little duo. It was only a local thing. It was never anything big, yeah. but it was called um, Image. In fact, what was that? Do you remember, was it Michael Barrymore? He had like a, a talent show. Okay where people would go on and like sing the, I can't remember oh, the name of it. Oh, it weren't um, Stars in Your Eyes, was it? Is it that no. Like, was he was that? No. Like, um, Matthew something. Oh, yeah. It yeah, was it was like Stars in Your Eyes, yeah. but it was different. I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, they was meant to go on that show, like my dad and my uncle, but it got cancelled, like, I think the week before. Something had happened with Michael, and it got cancelled, and they was devastated. But, yeah, so I've always grown up with them two, and, like, it sounds so funny to say, but, like, my grandma and granddad owned, like, um, a karaoke thing, and they'd go around Burnley and always bring the karaoke machine. Oh, nice. it's, quite, it's quite funny to say now. But, um, so, yeah, I've just always grown up. Like, everybody in my family, my dad's got four brothers, they all have a set song that everybody sings, and I if see. any, every karaoke, if, oh my God, if, <laughs> ever, if ever there's any karaoke anywhere, like, you know that granddad's singing ABC by the Jackson 5, <laughs> grandma's singing Pearl's a singer, like, it's yeah. always the same. So, I think just with that, I, I started singing, and then they was like, whoa, she, she's actually all right, like, yeah. we're just like, I'm a show, she's good, and then every everywhere we went any bar restaurant i remember i got we went out for an indian once and my mum stood me up on the seat and was like okay now sing wow. i was like mum everyone's eating the meal nobody wants me to sing wow. she was like no the, the bar mum wants you to sing so i had to oh it's so embarrassing how old now. were you when that when that happened then? i think probably about 10 wow well, honestly like acapella like yeah they're yeah, like acapella and then everybody just turned around and is like who is this kid singing why why is she singing it's, it was so embarrassing Do you remember what the song was it's probably some Adele, let's be honest. <laughs> she was always the go-to back then. But yeah, so I've always had like that inspiration. And I think it just like blossomed from there. Mm. And I think with like my, my dad always being into like the old stuff, like he loves like Neil Diamond, all that stuff. Um, it's, I've just, that's always what I've loved and listened to. And then I took it a bit step further and I'm like full on classic soul and like, I like Judy Garland sometimes. My music taste goes everywhere. That's but um, Yeah, it's like what we said in the car nowadays with the the music that people like nowadays. I'm like the odd one out. I'm yeah. like, oh, I want to sing Aretha Franklin, not like yeah. Dua Lipa. <laughs> I'm the same. It just feeds into your subconscious, that music that you listen to when you grow up. Yeah. I was the same with my granddad with the Beatles and all the 60s music. And like you say, it just subconsciously just stays with you, doesn't it? Absolutely, that, that, that music. Yeah. And it's a positive. You just hope that kids that are growing up now are being influenced in the right... I mean, what is the right way with music? There isn't a right way, yeah, is there? No. Well, no, you know. Everything's... Yeah. Well, I was um, I was working on a song, I think, in maybe, like, April, and I got some... I, I go to uni in London. I do music there, so there's, like, so many people who've worked in the industry, like, tutors and things like that. So I asked one of the songwriting teachers to look at my song and just give me a help or see what he liked about it. And he was like... The, the vibe of the song was like... Um, 
like Jocelyn Brown. It was like very Etta James mm. type. It was so old school. And he was like, oh, this is really good. And I really hope you prove me wrong, but I don't think this is going anywhere. <laughs> it's like, nobody nowadays wants to listen to this old mm. school. Like, and I was like, I'm 18, I'm 19 and I want to listen to this yeah, kind of music. Yes. So I feel like everyone's different. Like, but yeah, no, that broke me. And then I, I showed it to literally everybody else and they was all like, oh, tell him to shut up. Like, it's such a good song. So I'm like umming and ahhing with it because I'm like, oh, I don't want to... Oh, that's the thing. You've got to stick, you've got to, stick to your roots though or else yeah, you, won't, you won't enjoy percent. what you're doing. I've, and also you get these you get these people come out of the woodwork and they just create a new movement and it does go in circles. Yeah, so, you know, you just got to stick with what you're it's doing. It's like Amy Winehouse, isn't it? She did yeah. like modern soul and that wasn't exactly. a thing at the, at exactly. the time Michael Bublé went massive doing exactly, yeah. standards like yeah, yeah. you just got to yeah. it is it is a strange world because we were lucky that in well the mid noughties when I was growing up we had a wave of bands coming through that yeah. were just almost taking it back to that mid 90s Britpop era I'm so jealous so <laughs> like since then I haven't almost haven't heard a new movement like no. like that I love the mid the mid nineties yeah, as well. I, I wish do. that had come yeah, back. Yeah. That was such a good era. Absolutely. But um, yeah, no, I'd feel fake if I was doing anything else. Like I've sang on like friends' records, and it's been like house. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I mean, it, it sounds great, and I'm so glad you asked me to be on it. But it's just not my thing. <laughs> Putting your soulful spin on the house. <laughs> yeah, it's like killing me. You never know; it might catch a wave. That sort of stuff. <laughs> so yeah. obviously, you've you've grown up with that. You've grown up with all that. You've been made to sing in uh, Indian restaurants. Oh yeah, <laughs> but. Where did you actually think, right, now this is my turn, I want to perform? When did you start to get the bug to think, I want to do that? I think, um, I, well, I got really into musical theatre, which is, like, complete contrast. But I loved, I loved like, Grease and, like, Hamilton and all that stuff. And it was, like, it was, like, it was like oh, my God, this is my calling. <laughs> and then I realised I couldn't dance, so it wasn't my calling. I just I carried on singing. But when I was in high school, um, all of my teachers went on like a, a wave of getting married and they all asked me to sing at the weddings because they, they'd seen me in like musicals and stuff and they was like oh will you just sing at my wedding so I think I sang at like five teachers weddings maybe I never got paid for it, right. it wow. I think I got like a thank you card but like it was like slave labour that's but, cheeky um, that yeah I know it was like they was doing me a favour yeah, asking yeah. me to sing at the wedding yeah, yeah. but um exposure <laughs> yeah yeah so um so I did that and then halfway through high school I was like right I'm just gonna do this is just something that I really love doing I've always wanted to I think I remember I used to blow up my candles at my on my like cake when I was eight years old and be like please I just want to be a singer that's not all <laughs> oh, <right."> really? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah so I, in high school I was like right I'm just gonna do this I'm gonna like just go for it so I went to college in Manchester uh, which was like a performing arts college and I did musical theatre and that's where I learned I couldn't dance <laughs> so that was like big no-no so I did that for two years and then um, I just decided that I loved it I met Liam my pianist and we just gigged like every weekend we could and it was just amazing and then I moved to London and we did yeah. what I'm doing there we'll take you back to that very first gig then so you say was it was it a teacher's wedding that was your very first gig yeah but I don't really class it as a gig because it was like yeah it weren't that's a tough first gig that though was it like yeah. a ceremony as well yeah or? it was her walking down wow, the aisle that's a tough gig to start I know off and I was yeah. like 14 shaking I, yeah. think I still have videos on my mum's phone and you can hear the voice shaking me because like it's not like just a, a gig in a pub where no one's listening well you know what I mean they, yeah. they're off in a conversation no, off right, getting yeah. pissed off like talking to other yeah, people yeah, yeah. but like everybody was listening I know their eyes weren't on me but there was it was oh, silence yeah. like you could hear a pin drop and I was like this is just not for me yeah, any mistakes and people are listening <laughs> yeah. with that yeah. and now I can do weddings now and I love it but yeah. it was so nerve wracking for me but I think I would I would probably class my first gig I was probably about 17 it was a it was in a bar in Burnley it was called the Cork House um and it was like the best first gig in my life I wasn't even nervous I just got on I had Liam next to me who played the piano piano it was and it was just so good and we got paid I think we got paid like 50 pound each <laughs> which is like nothing now that I yeah. think about it but it was like first gig yeah. and it was experience and it was it was so good and I think that was like three years ago maybe that I did my first proper one and then ever since then I've just been going crazy gigging every weekend brilliant so do, do you remember going to watch your your, um, your uncle and your dad in his duo do you remember like vivid memories of going and, and seeing crowds reactions and thinking I want a little bit of that as yeah, well yeah I remember 
I remember my seeing them both perform separately, I think. Because I, I was really young when it happened, when there was in a band but I've seen like videos and everything from it and it was like so like interesting to watch and like because all of my family sing um so I've seen them both sing separately and it just used to like I just used to make me like so like happy and yeah. just seeing how much they loved it and then I started doing it and then the reaction from the crowd from that and it was like <laughs> oh my god she's well good and like <laughs> what this 10 year old can sing like that and it just used to make me like my head would just grow bigger and bigger so, <laughs> so I loved it from then. I think it's rare isn't it that like you were saying you were blowing your candles out and having a wish to become a singer I think it's rare that people have a dream from when they're very young and they're oh, still yeah. th like my dreams constantly changed as I was younger I wanted to be a footballer then an athlete and then <laughs> you know it's like it's, so you, that has been something no, that you've been set on from the start been, I yeah. actually don't think I can do anything else like I went um obviously I said I worked behind a bar I'm crap <laughs> I smash the glasses constantly I mean I'm good at making a good cocktail I could do your good sex on the beach but that's about it <laughs> I'm I'm so bad and like I try I've just tried to do so many different things. I worked in cafes, I've worked like in theatres, and I'm just crap at everything. And then the one thing that I know that I can do for certain is is that, and it's always just been something that I've wished for and always wanted to do. Yeah. I'm a bit fuming that I told you my wish now. <laughs> I'm like, oh, come uh -oh. true. Oh, shit. <laughs> Pretend you didn't hear that. We're well, already doing it, so it doesn't really count. Yeah, it doesn't count if we anymore. edit it out, it doesn't count. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, remember, um, I remember I had a, a job in a bar as well when I'd just le left uni and my first ever shift, it was in a harvester, if you remember the harvesters. Oh, yes. And I got, I got I um, a glass from the top. I, I didn't know how to pour a pint or anything. I grabbed this glass, it fell. No. The whole, like top shelf fell and all smashed down on the bar there's a customer waiting to pay and there's just glass like just shatters oh, everywhere i was just like oh my why god why do they put racks above your head yeah, what's yeah. the point in that like... mine was wine glasses and i put one like a prosecco glass at the front and all the back ones fell off like <laughs> wow. behind, as i was putting it on honestly it's the worst invention ever oh, that yeah. or i've done it where um I poured, I like, I had the tray in my hand and I bent down to put a drink on the table and the whole thing's just poured <laughs> on the person. It was so embarrassing. I don't know how I didn't get sacked, to be fair. Yeah, it's crazy. Honestly. It is, uh, no, bar, bar work is a thankless task, isn't it? Oh my God. Um, what I was going to get on to, so when you were first, obviously out performing after that first gig with the pianist, yeah. did you find a struggle that, like, to get more gigs or did it just come off the back of that i don't know i think we didn't really struggle burnley's quite a small place mm. it feels big but it's actually tiny so you do one gig somewhere and it's like yeah. everybody else wants you so <laughs> there was like three other bar owners in the bar at the time and there was like ah we want you here or like we're getting married at this time we want you there so i think after that it's just about it's about like word of mouth in it really it is, it so I'd, I'd texted a lot of people and been like bars that i know or gone in and said i'm doing this now can you give me can I gig for you um but a lot of it just came from like what people had seen and plus the place that we did first time like our first gig they wanted us back like on a I think it was like a fortnightly basis so that was good yeah. and then uh, yeah we just got like bits and bobs everywhere which was quite good seems like a positive start that's it yeah. to gigging life really yeah, yeah. so when did you hit your first challenge and what was it mm. my first challenge um Probably, probably move into London, you know. I mean, that sounds like, I, I, maybe, wait, I need to think about this. <laughs> um, I think moving to London, yeah, because like I said, I did that absolute awful gig and that was actually my first ever worst gig, which I'm quite lucky because I've done so many and that has been like... Which gig was this, sorry? The one that I, where oh, I met right, you yeah, in Paddy yeah, yeah. that place. It was such a, <laughs> like, for me, I remember coming off and ringing my mum and I was like, Mum, I'm never doing a solo gig ever again. <laughs> but I've done one since and it was fine. But yeah, um, yeah I think moving to London because... I moved there like all on my own. I'd never, I think I've been to London once with my dad when I was like eight years old and we went to Buckingham Palace and it was, that's all we did. So I'd like just been thrown into this like huge place and I'd gotten there um, a week before anybody else had moved into the uni flat. So I was like all alone for a whole wow. week and I was like, what have I done? Like, this is not good. And I was complete, I mean like complete writer's block the entire time. I couldn't write anything. So I was just in my room the whole time, just stressing, and I was like, oh my God, I've made such a big mistake. <laughs> and, then, and then I started uni, and I just got all the inspiration from that, and like seeing, so there's so many interesting people in London, like it is crazy. I've met just 
people that I don't never even would imagine meeting. Mm. Like they're just so interesting and just cool. And I feel like the little. I always thought I was cool, and then I moved to London. I was like, oh my god, everyone's so cool here. Yeah. So I think maybe maybe moving to London was the first challenge, but it was it was so much better than I imagine now. Like I'm so glad I did it. It's like. It's like, it was like a big turning point in my career, I feel like. Yeah, I was going to say, well, coming from a small town like Burnley, like you say, where you know everybody and, and like you say, you can easily get gigs and stuff like that to go into such a yeah. big pond. Yeah. It yeah, must have been a bit of a culture shock at the start. Massive culture shock because where I live is like such a, like, it's small town vibes. Like mm. everybody's mind works in the same <laughs> yeah. way. Mine yeah. just doesn't. Um, but yeah, and then I got there and getting gigs in London is you could be like Beyonce and it's so difficult because every it's like penny for a pound for a singer down there. Everybody has already got gigs booked up for months in advance. Yeah. And like here, I come back for, to Burnley just for work because it's like <laughs> I can get a gig like that around mm. in Burnley. But I've got I've got a gig coming up, thank God, um, in September. And it's in like this soul funk like bar in Soho, which I'm so excited about. Um, but I feel like just getting your foot in the door is like the first step. And then hopefully after that, there'll yeah. be like a few, mm. like loads more to come. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. Yeah. I think that was the one thing I struggled with, but mainly because I really struggled to sell myself. Right. I, I had that thing about not wanting to act too arrogant. Whereas actually, if really, you know you're good. Yeah. And you say, yeah, I'll get 20 people in. Most bars will bite on that straight yeah. away. Yeah. Like, you don't even have to do it. Yeah, no, that's what it's like. So I, I feel like I don't struggle with selling myself. I feel like I come across too much right. sometimes. I'm like, no, please, I'll, I'll give you all this custom and everybody will love me. <laughs> and I like proper sell myself up. Um, but yeah, I think if I was to do a gig in London now, I reckon I, I have enough friends in London that would like really support me, which I think is another really important thing. Like having that support basis. Like yeah. that's another thing in in Burnley where I where I'm from. Um, the the bars love me because they know I've got the world's biggest family, and everybody just comes <laughs> to every single gig. Anything for a good pint and to listen to me sing, they're always up for it. <laughs> so that's what sells me there, I think, as well sometimes. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to get my foot in the door in London. Do like. your family get up with you sometimes and sing at your gigs? Oh yeah, yeah. My it was my I think my birthday last year, and my friend was pl was gigging at the place, so I'd booked the place out and I'd got my friend to gig, and I obviously I'd won too many glasses of wine and decided <laughs> I wanted to sing too. Um, so I did, and my dad had brought his guitar down, so he got up and wow. was singing with us. And my uncle, in fact, I think I was doing a gig in his pub called Art and Lee in Burnley, and um, somebody had like sometimes we do requests, and if if we know the song, we'll just sing mm. it. And somebody had requested um, "Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me." Love the song. I can't sing it. <laughs> I mean, I'm no Elton John or George Michael. Is that, that's who sings it, isn't it? Don't let the sun go. It's George Michael, isn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty I'm sure Elton it is. John. Yeah. I think I know he did. I know he. Yeah, he did do it. Yeah, duet I think with maybe. John, it could be that one. I'm, I'm pretty. Yeah, they did a couple. To, yeah, they, they did, did a couple a few. together. I'm gonna say George Michael. Well, yeah. that's like my uncle Mickey's like go-to song. Right, he loves right. it. So I was like, Mickey, come up. And he was like, I'm not singing. I was like, get up now. And so he got up, and I was like, sat in the corner, and he was just vibing away, and it was so fun. <laughs> but he loves it. He pretends he doesn't love it, but he loves oh, yeah. it when I get him up. Absolutely. I was saying to him the other day, I was like, if I ever play like. Madison Square Garden. Do you want to like come up with me? It was like, no, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll definitely do it. <laughs> do you not All notice right. whenever it's family members that get involved? Well, the crowd love that, don't oh, they? Oh, they love like, it. I yeah. go out with my granddad. He plays drums for me sometimes, and like people just love the fact that you're actually it's, out playing with family members. I know, it's like, so sweet. Yeah, it's a you get you get a boost like from the crowd. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I, I want to start like a, in in the future. It'd be so sick to start like a Jackson Five, but like <laughs> my felt like a one. Woods thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing though that's the thing though we did a duo gig the other week well it ended up being a trio since your granddad joined on oh, that's but like so it was sweet. like yeah you two are good but him he's oh, yeah. fantastic him yeah. I'm like the so I know I keep talking about Liam the guy who plays piano with me but he's got this one trick up his sleeve where he can play Piano Man by Billy Joel oh, yeah. have you heard it yeah, with yeah, the yeah. harmonica and he puts the harmonica on and he plays and he sings at the same time and everybody loves him and I'm like Christ I've just been up for an hour and 45 minutes and he's getting all the yeah. bloody applause <laughs> for, and one like, for one song for one song fuming right I'm just gonna we're just gonna pause it there very quickly um, as 
we're running out of time ever so slightly and that's gone off as well so uh, yeah <laughs> right, we'll see you shortly in a minute hello it's lee from the one more Songcast. i do apologize about interrupting your episode but this is a public service announcement no we need people to like share subscribe and follow us across social media youtube and the podcast platforms it would really help us to reach more people reach musicians like ourselves and reach just people who like listening to podcasts. So across TikTok, Instagram and Facebook, you can find us at Tomscast1 or just simply the One More Songcast on YouTube or your favourite podcast platform, including Apple Podcasts. So don't forget to download, rate and review on your podcast platform. Get in our comments, like, share, subscribe on YouTube. And also, just follow everything we generally do across social media. Cheers. I'll let you get back to your episode now. Right, welcome back to the One More Songcast, part two. And uh, we're just going to quickly go back to your um, musical fear today before we move on oh, to your uni. Yeah. So you say that um, you were sort of wanting to be involved in musical theatre, but it was the dance side that let you down. So yeah. talk, talk to us a little bit about that experience then. So I loved singing, obviously. And I'm so dramatic. I'm such like an over-dramatised person, like when I want to be. So the singing, the acting through song was like amazing for me. I was like, this is what I'm born to do. <laughs> and then acting, fine. Love a bit of acting, no problem. I'm really confident as well. So stage, being on stage yeah. doesn't bother me. And the dancing was just, I was like, oh, what a few step ball change that'll be fine and I got the basic stuff but it was just the everything else ballet trying to do ballet as like a fully grown 18 year old never done ballet in the life yeah. was like awful the bloody tutus the pink tights it was not a vibe it was is it awful. like all the flex they have quite a bit of flexibility don't they in, in yeah ballet, well see I'm really flexible I always yeah, have been yeah. but I don't know what it was. I can, you know, I've got a good groove, but I don't have the moves. It was, it was so not good. Like I remember my first, um, it was during COVID, but our first like showcase kind of thing was in an empty theatre and just a stage because no one could come because of COVID, so it was filmed. And um, we was doing like chassis or whatever it's called, <laughs> like spinning around the stage. And my dance teacher like was screwed. She was like, cut, turn the cameras off. Cause it was like, it was the bad group first. And I was <laughs> part of the bad group, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and she was like, this is disgusting. What have I taught you? You've all forgot your wow. moves. And we was all just sat there like, oh my God. And she was such a lovely woman as well, but get on the bad side of it. Don't do her moves properly. She was <laughs> fuming. It was so embarrassing. And I remember th this, this guy, George, bless him, what a guy, he, um, he just ran off crying because he just couldn't do it. And I was like, I actually want to die right now. It's the worst. I'm, I'm so glad there was nobody in the audience because it was awful. But um, So did yeah. you persevere with that then? Did you try yeah, and try? Yeah, I did. Yeah. My teachers were, year two of college, my teachers were like, wow, Johnny, I didn't think you could get this far. Yeah. They thought I was going to be quit by like the first right, okay. month. But I, I carried on going and it was good. I make it out like I was like absolutely... Two, two left feet I weren't that bad yeah. I can do a few stuff but it just weren't my vibe it was like six hours of dance every day which mm. is like basically cardio yeah. and I mean I looked great like I was so <laughs> healthy but also <laughs> it was just not it wasn't fun I was like sweating constantly I'd go home with like just greasy hair because wow. it stuck to my head because it was so I was just sweating all the time <laughs> but um yeah I actually loved college college was like I'm glad I went to musical theatre and didn't just go straight into music because it gave me loads of like life lessons and yeah. I, I got so many gigs from from just being in Manchester constantly. But um, yeah, and it it was it was really fun. I just <laughs> the dancing was just not for me. My da my dance teachers was all they were all like shocked that I didn't carry on doing musical theatre because I probably could have and I probably could have done something with that. Mm. And I did love like musical theatre is like my first love. I did love it. And I was the acting through song and just being on stage was amazing and being just dramatic was just my thing. But um, no, I'm so glad that I went on just to do purely music. Yeah. It's like best decision I ever made. <laughs> just bring that mic ever so slightly close to you. That's it. That's better. That's Sorry. better. I was just me, me, me. Brain was going just move that <laughs> mic a little bit. No. So um, yeah, I suppose with life lessons and stuff, it, it it sort of taught you to stick out things. So like you say, it was probably meant to be in that sense. Yeah, definitely. I remember the. I think it was maybe two weeks into the year and I had this one singing teacher, Jake, 
he, I, I pulled him to the side. I was like, Jake, I'm going on the acting course. I can't do this anymore. The dance is just way too much. I'm not vibing at all. <laughs> and he was like, Jody, what the hell are you talking about? Like, you're not even that bad. Yeah. But I was like, Jake, yes, I am. I need to get off this course. And I was like, I remember going home on the bus, X43, Burnley to Manchester. And I was like looking out the window and just like tears going down my face. <laughs> it was like such a music video moment. <laughs> I was about to say that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, was, it was raining outside and dark. Never mind, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. And then uh, the week later, I was like, snap out of it. What are you even playing at? You're not even that bad. And I carried on doing it. And it was so good. I was yeah. just being dramatic. Yeah. Sometimes that persistence, like the one thing like everyone says now and across all things is that people, young people don't have resilience. Yeah. I think that doing stuff like that, just sticking out something, even if you don't think it's for you, just get to the end. Yeah. You realise you'll get something from it. And just take one thing. That's yeah, it. Yeah, and that's the thing with this career as well. Like resilience is like the number one thing you need. Working hard and resilience is like the you're not going to get anywhere if you don't like stick with things because everybody wants to do this. Like everybody who has a bit of like musical talent wants to do this as a career and. Not everyone's gonna get it, cause what the hell? It's such a hard career to get, mm. industry to get into. But like, I feel like just sticking with it is like all I need. I'm glad that I did, cause it's taught me like willpower and just to stay yeah. doing what I'm doing. So you talk about mo um, obviously moving to to London, which was a culture shock. What was it like? Did you did you keep coming back home at college then? I'm guessing you didn't stay over at college, did you, in Manchester? In, no, I, so I you... went to and from every day. Right, oh, I see. I, I bet like, that was a bit of a trek, wasn't half it? Half past four in the morning, I'd wake yeah. up every morning, get my ballet stuff on, put my joggers on and get on the bus wow. to get there for like eight. It was wow. it was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot. Yeah, four a.m. Especially like sixteen years old when you yeah. don't want to get out of bed in the Absolutely. first place. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it was dark, still dark outside. I'm like shivering, <laughs> but it was it was fun. I'm glad that I did it. I re but I used to, it was good because I could like brag to everybody else that didn't get up at half for like how hard I worked because I get up at half past four. <laughs> I was like, you woke up at seven o'clock this morning. I woke up at half four. Rise don't and complain. Grind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so during that time, then where you were struggling with your dance, did you consider just dropping out of that, that whole? Thing? thing all together and, and go and doing something completely different or was it always in the back of your mind that no actually I do still want to be a singer and I do want to venture oh, yeah, into that no yeah. that was never a question it yeah. was like this is I just knew that I needed this is what I needed to do and it was just like it was like two years of not enjoying myself for like a whole life of mm. doing what I love so it was like it was never a thing that I was ever going to drop out I don't think I I actually do not know what I would do if I was to do anything else. I can't see myself doing anything else ever. Mm -hmm. Like, I couldn't be a teacher. Kids upset me. They really, I can't spend too long with kids. Mm -hmm. They get on my nerves. I couldn't work in, I don't know. There's just nothing that I could do. So yeah, that was never a question of, of stopping doing what I'm doing. Yeah, wicked. So when you're doing the um, musical theatre, were you also getting vocal coaching alongside that? Y yeah, there was, so there was, I think we did four hours of dance a day, two hours of singing, and then an hour of acting, like, every day. Something like that, I can't remember. So, yeah, it was always one-on-one -on -one, um, singing. And we also did, like, ensemble singing, which was really good for me as well, because I was really bad at, um, like, doing harmonies and stuff. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, but I just want to be, like... I just can't sing with other people around me. So it taught me, like, I'm really glad I did that because now I'm, like, really good at picking up harmony straight away. So if I need to do, like, backing vocals on any of my songs, I, like, know what I'm doing. That is a skill to have that. I wish I knew how to do that. Um, it, well, it, it's, like, it's like a full level of training yeah. you're into sing. Like, it's, like, it's not just singing. It's, no. like, knowing what... Oh, I can't even explain it. It's, yeah. I find it so yeah. hard. With harmonies, it's almost like you're separating parts of your brain because you've got yeah. to know what their lead, what the lead line is to be able to harmonise with it and yeah. what the right harmony is even sometimes. Absolutely. Especially when you're creating your own music because you can just go with the standard thirds or whatever. But sometimes if it, it makes sense more. for to just hang on one note yeah. and let that lead line move around that note, it just opens your sound up. Yeah, it really does. I have a friend, one of my <coughs> one of my like absolute best friends ever from that I met in uni actually, who is from Manchester, which was really right. weird. Um, 
she's like such a good heart she picks up harmonies like that like i'll be singing and she can do like the third fifth fourth she can do everything and i'm just like in awe sometimes so half the time i'll just get her to come into the studio and be like right what am i singing here <coughs> tell me what i'm singing and i'll, and I'll just do it or sometimes i'll just force her to do it because yeah. she just knows more than me but it's such a skill to have I is it one like. of those that where maybe at the time you don't realize how valuable some of these lessons are even yeah from a young age like you sit there and you're like oh my god what did i get up at half for mm. this for like this is absolutely like i, I would rather be in bed yeah. but now i'm so glad that like i went to that and there was like i don't know if you've ever been to a music lesson like a proper one this is such stupid stuff that you have to do like <laughs> singing through a straw oh, yeah. and like just doing so many random stuff or like getting on the floor and doing stretches and i'm just like what even is stretches. this <laughs> like my, i had a teacher who used to make us lie on the floor and like put a leg up in the air and then sing something. Wow. It, it was, what was that all for, like, breath control or something? Yeah, things like right, that. Yeah. There was a name for it, but I can't remember. Yeah. Um, but I'm so glad I did now, because I, like, I could... I've, been, I've like, dabbled in teaching people singing, like, a, a bit. I'm not very good at it, but I've dabbled, because like, I've been taught all my life. Yeah. And it's not nothing, like, crazy, but if, if, like, I have a little cousin who really wants to learn how to sing, so she'll, like, come to me and I'll just, like, teach her a few mm. things. So I'm glad I've got that now because if I ever need, like, a backup or if I ever want to go into that, I do have, like, experience in, like, getting taught in that way. Yeah, absolutely. I think there is there is that element to that. Like, I've, I've only been teaching really properly for about 18 months. Yeah. I really struggled to begin with. It's to hard. find the, to find the spot because you think they're making no progress but then you remember your own progress it was slow you yeah. first you do it brilliantly in the lesson come on practice it and it it was awful yeah music's such like a slow and steady thing to get like exactly yeah. talent in absolutely i think as well with the harmonies did you do things like would you just practice harmonizing with adele and like yeah, when you're playing around? absolutely my sister hates me when i do that she's <laughs> like sing it in the real note when it's like on the radio and i'm like oh. <laughs> she hates it but i'm just like no it's fun now i can do it i'm like oh it's so fun just to harmonize with adele like oh, what yeah. <laughs> so um Obviously, you said you had a little bit of classical tra uh, musical training. I've no I noticed when I watch you sing, you've got a very like open style, like effortless almost in some ways. Yeah. Do you think the cl the classic training helped? Was there anything that you maybe, you use maybe yeah. now, or you don't realise that you use that you maybe do? Probably. I think um, if you heard my musical theatre sound <laughs> you'd be like this is not the same person I, I, it's it's so different because especially if you're doing like a contemporary american song mm. and you're like it's like completely different to what i sing like now but i tended to go for the roles that was more similar to my range like mm. i was in um our last year of college we did fame i don't have you heard of fame yeah, the yeah. Musical? yeah obviously um and one of the teachers I, I played mrs sherman and she was like soulful like crazy she was amazing and it was like like solely all of the songs that she did and i went for that one and i got it and it was like perfect for me because it's the way that i sing like anyway but um yeah some some things were like drastically different to what i usually sound like but I think um, a lot of like with when I when I went to un college um, and I did the vocal lessons, I had a problem with um, over using my voice and singing so much that I would like come off with like such a raspy voice, mm. um, and like that the, the getting trained properly through that she like helped me all these exercises to do and like to to avoid like crazy like notes that hurt and like do it in a different way and change the vowels and things like that. Yeah. So that like really helped me in that way so i think yeah definitely i've taken like a like that aspect of it from there but with the classical singing like the really like fine-tuned like fancy like american style singing yeah. i've not really taken that with me no, it's, I, I went through that, them stages i started with a classical teacher then i did the whole straw stuff that you're yeah. talking about and that, i never really got on board with that I think the, the the stuff with the vowels is really important, isn't it? Yeah, how you massively. shape it and how you just slightly put a different twang on a word just yeah. to get it a little bit more effortless. So that's a lot of what Chris teaches us as well. So yeah, it's true. So what? So you're saying you were overusing your voices and you were just singing all the time, or well, or you no, were just I'd, pushing I'd, it a bit? Yeah, I'd sing songs that were maybe a little bit too right, big for yeah. my what yeah. I was used to, or like I'd like just push my voice and like I could do it, but maybe I wasn't like 
warmed up enough. Mm. Like I never used to warm up before mm. gigs. Ever, Do you warm ever, up ever. now? Yeah, yeah, every time because I'm like I don't want to even risk it because sometimes I'm just like this is this really necessary? But then also I'm just like no. Like for the long run, this is necessary to yeah, warm up. It is. Where do you go and warm up? At a, do you go and sit, I suppose you're in London most of the time, but if you're doing a gig around here, do you go and sit in your car and do no, it? No, I sit, I like, um, sometimes I've done it in the bathroom, but that has caused to be a problem because you'll be in the mirror like, la 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 la. And oh, what, in the walk, bathroom of the bar? Yeah. The and world, somebody will brief. walk in and be like, what the fuck yeah. are you doing? But, um, yeah, no, half the time I'll like do it at home or like, or, like on the way to yeah, the thing because uh, yeah. it's so yeah. embarrassing. I think. I think I've learnt this because I've noticed a couple of times I'm not warmed up before gigs and even when I'm just doing backing vocals in my band and you go for the you go for the note that normally when you've warmed up is effortless it's perfectly, yeah. and you notice you're pushing a little bit yeah. more and it just feels that little bit different it's so strange like, right okay then you have to go and warm up at half time yeah but... it's so weird and it, you wouldn't even think it would make a big difference because you're only like what doing lip trills and like just <laughs> yeah. stuff, and you wouldn't even think it does anything but it really does one thing that i don't do though is like a cool down and i, I feel like i yeah. should do that but i just never see the point in it i'm yeah. like always too like pumped up to do it i don't even know what i do you do a cool down when you i do don't it? do a cool down but i've i've only known one singing teacher actually tell yeah say, tell you to do one. say to do it and there's one way you sort of lying on the floor and it's just breathing you're not even <laughs> yeah, using your voice no vocals um, so I, I feel like I should do it like yourself, but I've never really found the way to get a routine in because yeah, and it's just late at night. It's, yeah, it's half past twelve. <laughs> I like want to go home and have like a brew. I just don't. I just don't want to just be doing that. Yeah. I probably should, but it's not. To for be me. honest with you, though, like I don't. Like some people have said to me about doing it a cool down and stuff, but I don't really know. Like as long as you aren't getting up next morning in your horse like yeah is it really is it necessary I think sometimes I don't know really yeah I think there will be an element of morning voice anyway because yeah, oh, yeah. you're waking morning up voice. you're waking up and it's just morning voice nothing. I sound like a man sometimes <laughs> I wake up and I'm like whoa I can hit I'll hit like do you know um, Beyonce the song If I Were A Boy oh yeah, yeah such a low song I can sing it perfectly in the morning I love it <laughs> and then it gets to half past 12 in like the afternoon and I'm like why can't I sing that has anymore? it not got that bit where she goes for it though if I heard a boy yeah, that was good. That was actually so good. Not no, sure I can't do that, that in the morning. That's no. like pre yeah. pre afternoon yeah. Yeah. or post afternoon. <laughs> but the start of it is like yeah. it's crazy low. I could never yeah. do it. No, I mean, I hate, I hate. It. I don't think you see many many lads with that sort of level of vocal range. No, but like singers like. Beyonce, you had like Nicole Scherzinger or Mariah Carey. They've got like over three octave vocal ranges, and you're like, how are you hitting that note? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing is as well, I'm quite low for a girl anyway. My voice is like quite a low voice. Um, but like the guy who I play with, I feel like I talk about him all the time, Liam. No. Um, he's got a higher octave range than me. It's so weird. He would never sing up there, but like, because it, it sounds like crazy. But, um, yeah, he's, he's octave. I think he's, I think he's like a two octave range, and I'm like one and a half mm. or just over a half. Mm. I'm so, my as much as I like, I, I'm all right at singing. I'm, my octave range is crap. <laughs> it's literally I can do it. In fact, I just learned how to do a whistle note. By the way, that's right, okay. pretty impressive for wow. me because everybody knows I'm like the lowest singer ever. But I, the, I can't go from like. I can't, in the middle of the whistle, I can't do any of that high stuff. I can just go straight from my normal singing mm. voice to the whistle. Yeah. It's so weird. Do you not find like you can, you can hit, say, the two octaves though with exercises, but when it comes to actually delivering a yeah. phrase of a song, it's it's not the same, is it, sometimes? Yeah, it's... or sometimes it's the opposite. I mm. can't do it like just in my head, but once I've built myself up to it with the rest of the song, yeah. I'm like, wow, this is easy. Yeah, exactly. It's so weird. Yeah, it's so weird because I had singers where it was like the psychology of it. Yeah. It was more yeah. like they were going, right, just put yourself in this scenario in your head and you capture, captivate that emotion, you naturally shape the vowel. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's so weird. It is a whole ball game. One, I, one song I used to struggle with before I actually sung with Chris um, was, uh, do you know the song She Moves In Her Own Way by the Coops? Yeah, love that song. You know the middle, the middle eight bit? Yeah. Yes, I wish. wish. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was like, right, instead of making it, yes, I wish... The weesh. And it yeah. just 
Yeah. And that's, I think, is that not what he does? Though? He's very yeah. strange with the way he acts. He's got a um, weird, yeah. yeah but, but he almost does it like that half, that mid voice perfect and it trickles off yeah. into falsetto at the end. And I'm like, it's so weird. And people wouldn't even, you don't even notice it when you're singing. So, like, a non singer wouldn't be like, why has he just said wish instead of wish? Mm. But, like, it's, it, it makes such a difference. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so weird. I, I struggle with the, um, like, sometimes relaxing on songs. So say, mm. say like, w- when I have lessons, like, it's, like, a lot of the Beatles stuff, like, um, it's very, like, they're almost singing it in a really chill way. And I almost can't come down to that chill way and I try and give it more beans than what yeah. it needs. Um, I'm the complete opposite. I'm like, tr- I just have like zero effort, effort on right, some yeah, songs. Yeah. Some songs I'm like, if I, have you ever heard um, A Guy What Takes His Time? It's from Burlesque. Um, Probably uh, not then. I, I, I watched Christina this with Christina Aguilera yeah. sings oh, right, it, right, innit? Okay. Anyway, that's so like, like it's like bl- like really slow blues mm. and you don't even sing the songs on the on the right note because you're like just dragging it out and when I sing that oh my god I'm like halfway falling off the stage because I'm so like just relaxed <laughs> when I'm doing it because I always put on a performance as well I'm like become a different person yeah. especially if I'm with some playing some look especially if someone's playing with me yeah I'm like uh I just become this completely different person like I did um, a cabaret night once for charity up in Burnley um, and it was so good we I think we raised like a grand and a half it was amazing and it was just me um, singing with a pianist and I did loads of like really like just chilled out blues (laughs) stuff and I did um, do you know Jessica Rabbit yeah what's the song where she sings on the stage and she's like um, oh my god like Oh, I can't remember. She's talking about, I don't know. Somebody will know whoever's watching. The Listeners, <laughs> comment below. <laughs> yeah, what is go. that song that Jessica <laughs> Rabbit sings? Anyway, I did that and it just, it's like so chilled out and relaxed and I love doing it and I just became like Jessica Rabbit. I was like <laughs> loving it. That's wicked. How, so you were talking about how you get into these characters when you're performing with people. What's your experience like with performing with it's Liam, isn't it? You're, uh, yeah, you're Liam. Peeing. And then going on your own, do you find it diff- more difficult on your own? It is different. I actually, it's weird. I get like, sometimes if I'm talking to the audience, especially like in the earlier days, I got like embarrassed that mm. like Liam could hear me talking to him because mm. I was like, Liam, what do I even say? Mm. Like, I'm, I'm embarrassed to even talk now. But then when I'm on my own, I become like this like, like, outspoken like person right. who'll just talk to the audience or in, interact with them and like I don't really care yeah but um it's interesting that because I'd I usually have it on the flip side I feel more self-conscious when I'm on my own if I'm in a duo or a trio I feel more confident yeah well singing wise I'm more confident yeah. with Liam but talking to the audience I'm more confident like yeah. on my own and if there's a family member that's watching me like if my dad's in the audience and I'm talking I actually want to just cry because I just hate it because I'm like oh my god he's going to text the absolute piss out of me after this that I've <laughs> do you not started. find that easy when you have people that you know in the, in the audience well I do and I don't because yeah. my dad is such a heckler because he knows <laughs> that I hate it so if I say something to the audience he'll be like say something back to me and I'm like dad not now please just shush please Boom. <laughs> yeah literally I, I weirdly find the heckling part the easiest uh, I, the introducing songs bit yeah I just try my whole hardest not to sound like a wedding DJ like hello right. <laughs> oh, Next. thank you all for coming down <laughs> who's drinking yeah my go to is like get pissed tip the bar staff yeah. and then everybody just like laughs but I'm also like I do sound like <laughs> that pub wedding singer yeah, like yeah. Well, actually, what you say about hecklers, I've had it once where um, I was in a I was in a pub, um, in like not the nicest area in the world, but it Burnley. was a great gig. <laughs> yeah, in Burnley. I mean, it was in Burnley to be fair. <laughs> no, <laughs> but um, yeah, and I was singing. I had Liam next to me, and a guy came up to me um, and tried to sell me Cathedral City cheese. Like oh. it was like I've I've just I've just nicked this cheese from shop. Do you want to buy it off me? I was like um. I'm actually busy right now, but just call me. Like, I'll come after you after the show. So, like, I had that, and then all the hecklers started after that because he'd asked me on the stage. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> so it was like, way like, proper thinking the right hard because some guy had asked to sell me some cheese. It was so embarrassing. But you don't like, get that in this in that part. Of I like know you'd only get it up north. Yeah, you? yeah. But actually, now I, th- I tell the story, and I'm like, what a funny but also like That's random strange. thing to happen to me. Yeah. 
it is funny when um, when people come up to you and they and they, they, they can't grasp the fact. So say you're in the middle of actually singing, yeah, and they want to ask you a question. You oh, do, I know. They, you're just like I'm singing. I can't just stop to go. What, yeah. I'm, I'm using my mouth yeah. already. I can't talk to you. The, <laughs> so the worst one is when like I don't know if you've had this. We're playing guitar and singing. And some guy's there trying to fist bump you. Yeah. Oh, at what yeah, point? Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll just stop playing. Hang on, guys. Well, there you are, mate. Yeah. That gig that I said was with that I met you at. Some girl came up to me whilst I was singing, asking to use my plug for a phone charger. Oh yeah, she was doing it to me the whole gig. And I was like, yeah. I'm, I'm actually busy right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But then I couldn't. I felt bad to be that person who's like, no, leave me alone. Yeah. So I like grabbed the mic and was like. Trying to yeah. do it really seamlessly. Do you know what she was doing though? She was getting about. She was having some domestic with her boyfriend or something on the yeah. phone. She was getting about one or two percent battery, then taking it off, disappearing, coming back, I putting know. it back in. Just keep it in. But <laughs> then know? also after you'd left, that same girl, somebody else had taken a phone and a yeah. charger, and she came up to me and was like, "Where's my phone?" And I was like, "Nothing to do with me." <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. Somebody else took it. I probably <laughs> the lad who was on before we took it home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, blame it on you. Yeah, but um, yeah, or I've done it, or people. Will, come up to Liam whilst he's playing mm. and Liam is such a like a talented piano player like he does so much and his hands and his brain are just constantly thinking yeah. and he's, he's incredible but people will come up to him and ask him questions because they can't come to me and I just can see his brain like oh my god shut up I'm yeah. trying to concentrate really hard yeah, don't I don't brain. know why I was doing this the whole time <laughs> um, but yeah I feel so bad for him because they know that he's like not singing so they can talk to him yeah but I, yeah hecklers it's mad. We, we could have a whole episode. Well, we kind of oh. have already had a whole episode on uh, things that go wrong at gigs. Yeah. Just before we break off then, is there, is there anything that stands out with that regard? Things that have gone wrong at gigs? I think... The cathedral cheese one is, is a first. The cathedral cheese. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, about, what, about, what about London then? We'll move on to um, your London life in the next episode, but I imagine gigging around there is a very different experience, isn't it? Yeah, well, I haven't, I haven't really done many no. in London yet. I've only been there for... Um, probably seven eight months mm. and i'm like i said just trying to get the foot in the door but um i've done like a few like open mics and stuff and that's always been fun but it's like you get such a different crowd of people in open mic nights oh, yeah. and it's always like really sad depressing songs and yeah, then i get yeah. on there and i'm like this is a man as well <laughs> and it's like just trying to pick up the like vibe everybody's like in open mic nights so I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's usually just acoustic guitar playing with like songs that you've never heard of, which I suppose that's the space for that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You can't do that in the in the pub gigs, so it's a... Uh... Or also, like, you've got musicians there, so it's overly supportive as well. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're like, yeah, and I'm like, you don't even think I did that. You weren't even yeah. listening. Yeah, you weren't like, listening. Please, this like, is so embarrassing. My voice has just gone Ugh! in the middle of that top <laughs> yeah. note. Like, how are you clapping But then here? they'll point that out and be like, that was really good. And I'm like, you're just taking the piss out of me now because that was not good. <laughs> like, How do you deal with compliments at gigs? Because we were saying this on another episode. I only really, my ears only really perk up with compliments when it's another musician. Oh, and, really? And they'll say like, oh, you know, uh, you got a great voice or this or that. Uh, if it's just a punter, I'm usually just like, you know, it's, it's great that people are giving you compliments, but it kind of a little bit time goes well, over my head a bit. Yeah, well, I'm like quite... You become numb to it a bit, don't you? Sometimes, but I've been the victim of like, drunk Sally in the corner pulls me aside and sits me down and will talk to me for 30 minutes about mm. what am I doing in Burnley you should be out yeah. and about you should be on X Factor what are you doing and I'm like thanks so much like this and you, you're like you've, you've said this same compliment eight times but like <laughs> yeah. I really appreciate it and I feel it and I'm so thankful that you've said that to me but also like I need to go and sing now yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like um I don't know. I, I can't. I can't. And I'm, I was just like, I'm like, oh, thanks. It's like, a bit I don't awkward, really isn't it? Yeah. Um, Especially when someone is like, just keep saying the same thing, like, oh, you should. You're it's, amazing. it's the you're, drunks. Yeah. And it's just like you're like, cheers. Right? You can just feel your face. You're smiling that <laughs> much, hurts, just awkwardly. That you're just like, your face is killing you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I'm the worst for actually just talking to a, talking to a drunk and for ages. Well, you are the drunk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, the I am the drunk. <laughs> to be fair, it gigs. I'm so bad. I like get drunk with them half the time. Yeah. I have like a few. Yeah. Many glasses of wine. So then I I'll sit down with like someone drunk and I'll be like, yeah, but you're so good. And then I become that drunk too. Yeah, and then then yeah, you, when you go and watch a gig, you're like, I do it as well, but you're well better than me. Yeah, you're so it? good. And it's like, oh, thanks so much. You never, I never know what to say. I just like blush a little yeah. bit. I'm like, oh, thanks. Yeah. I've just ended up batting it off and going, and you know what? As long as you've enjoyed it, I've done my job. Yeah, absolutely. And that's it. Normally I go, oh, I did, I did. It was great. Like the ones that try. 
try and carry it on when you're just trying to lift the speaker. You're like, yeah, yeah, this we, is sound. <laughs> we had it before where um, it was somebody's birthday, but she was like so loud and like being really, really like not heckle of vibes, but like loud. <laughs> and um, she asked to sing on the microphone and I was like uh, I don't usually do that but then I felt bad because it was a birthday and she was like no no I'm really good like please 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 I'm really good <laughs> and she never sang usually that, the best she sang that last and to be fair the girl weren't that bad but I was just like yeah. I, do you know sharing my mic is such a big thing for yeah, me I was like, like oh gobbing all over and then it. it smelled like just gin and tonic when I got back what you were going to say cheese then <laughs> no <laughs> cathedral city <laughs> the jaw <George laughs> cheddar <laughs> fuck <laughs> off <laughs> Uh, I had a really good question then it's gone we'll have a quick break and uh, that could be on Pointless Comment of the Week that kind of, we need to get that going as well we've got a theme song for Pointless Comment of the Week so Cathedral anything that we say that's just like why did you just say that it's got a theme song for it and everything So I probably have about six every episode yeah, to be yeah. can Cathedral City Cheese be on there well that's Is not that, po- that's, that's quite oh, interesting oh no it's not that. Pointless yeah, yeah it's, it's not Pointless yeah, yeah. Right. never mind <laughs> right, we'll have a really quick break <laughs> uh, we'll be back shortly to talk about um, Jodie's life in London and how, how much different that is to living around here. So, uh, yeah. yeah, we'll see you shortly. Cheers. Slay. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? It's me, the daddy. Just wanted to take a moment out of the episode to promote a certain somebody today, a certain Stephanie Collette that has been helping us out, getting us started with filming, with lighting, with a little bit of photography as well. So big shout out to Stephanie. You can find her in Chorley at her studio. It's above the Blue Light Cafe, I believe it is. She does web design, photography. She does filming as well. She does all sorts of things in that sector. Um, And we'd really like to promote her. So her details are going to be in the link in the description below. So you can check her out if you want anything that's music related or um, even just family shoots she can do as well for you. So a whole range of things. And she's really good. We can vouch for that as well. So go check her out. Back to the episode. I'll see you later. Welcome back to the One More Songcast. We're into the third part of the episode. Enjoying it so far, Jodie? I'm loving it. I'm so Real. glad I'm here. Real, no, it's good to have you on. It's just interesting how we, we get to meet new people and, and yeah. you know, hopefully build, make the music world a look, come a little bit closer, especially local music yeah, as well. Especially so. up north. Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. Like under, what's the word? <laughs> or, not over dramatic, we're under priv- not. Under- underprivileged we're like <laughs> Under- undervalued we're undervalued yeah, by that's society a good one. yeah, yeah. you probably got a lot to say about that with uh, uh, being a Liverpool fan as well but uh, yeah. that's another topic um, so uh, we want to shout out Stephanie as well she's made these mugs for us as hey. we uh, as we uh, spoke about Stephanie. on the last episode um, www.stephaniecollette.com you can go and check out some of her photography work and um, videography as well so go and check her out we're in her studio today so uh, big thanks to Stephanie so we're going to move on to the third part and we're going to talk a little bit about your transition from living in Manchester, studying musical theatre and the struggles that you had with that to then going and pursuing music in London at a university in London. So yeah. just talk us about what you're actually studying at, um, in London. So I'm doing, it's it's vocal performance, so it's not songwriting, but it's music, like performing vocally. Yeah. But you get like, it, you, they tell you to like write your own music anyway. So yeah, I'm I'm loving it. It's it's so interesting because we do like some some lessons we'll do on our own, obviously because all vocalists need to, like it's just all the vocalists will be together. But sometimes we'll do it with like the producers and the drummers and the guitars, and we'll all get together. And it's just so interesting, like networking with all these people. And I feel like I've made like connections for life now, like that I'll need, you know, in years to come. Absolutely. Like I said, I've got a gig, in my gig in London, like my pianist from down up here can't go there. He's not He's not going. So I've had to like wean my way into all my connections and be like, who can yeah. play the piano for me in this gig? Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's pretty good. I'm loving it really. Talk a little bit about Liam then before we move on. So Oh, Liam's great. Yeah, go on. I love to... It, I, I wish he was here. Like, yeah, we could get him on at some point. <laughs> you know what? He'd probably love that. Yeah. I so mean... he's like self-taught um, jazz style pianist. I've never ever met somebody as talented as Liam. Right. Even like, even from being up in London and even meeting from all being right, up in that's London, cool like, then. Because there's pianists in London, like, and they're immensely talented. They're, they're insane. But like, they've been trained so like to do exactly what they need to do. Yeah. So they're very like 
like do, do precise. this, this and that. yeah precise and like fine tuned whereas Liam because he's so relaxed about it and he's like learnt himself and he, he just does what he wants to do mm. he's like he's so like he's, the way that he plays just feels so just jazzy and free and it's it's just so nice to listen to and like he wrote the piano part for my new song I've got a song coming out in September called I've Been Blue and he's he's wrote the piano part of that and it's so like just free and then I got I, I had to get like a pianist from London to play it and it just sounds so drastically different because right. it's like two completely different ways of playing the piano yeah, yeah. As, as talented as like the people in like the people that I've met in London are it's completely different I, I feel like and he's, he's so talented um but it's just a shame. He just loves the north so much. He just won't leave. But I'm like, he could do so much. So is he? Is he? Bur- you say he's Burnley, Burnley based as well. Bitch, yeah, so does he just love Burnley then? He loves Burnley. Burnley. Yeah, he's like big. But he's like so talented. He could go so far with what he does. And I'm like, just get out yeah. a little bit. Just so does he do music full time then as well? Or? Um, yeah, he just gigs. He doesn't have a full time. He doesn't have a job throughout the week. He just he solely based so gets, when you're away does he play for other people or does he sing and play he sings and oh, plays right, sometimes yeah. Yeah. yeah so we've he's done a few gigs whilst I've been away like on his own um, like I said he's got like the absolute crowd pleaser with Piano Man oh they love it when he gets he plays I don't know have I spoken about Piano Man y- y- I think yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes I have to know if it's off camera I know, or yeah, camera, you don't yeah, know yeah. Yeah. but um, yeah like he gets such good like feedback if, you, if only he would like yeah. Just leave Burnley. <laughs> like just, just dabble. Just get out just a little bit. Does it? Does it just terrify the life out of him going and doing a gig in London? I don't think so because he's like such a confident guy. Like yeah. he goes, he's he tra- he's travelled the world basically. Like he's always in Mexico with right. his, his girlfriend, and he's got like oh go, on holidays and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and like he'll go like to. He'll go to London for like he's he's a big horror guy. He loves like comic cons and oh, stuff. Okay. Not for me, but I support it. But he'll um he'll always go everywhere for all that stuff. He's been to like Texas and stuff. But I'm just like, come down to London just for one gig. See yeah. how you like it, please. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't want to. He's like, I, I just don't have the time. No, fair play, fair play. Uh, and it, it means potentially come and watch you uh, performing Burnley at some point. Um, yeah, that when you get so a weekend good. off, you know how it is. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll I try and book like... the same weekend off next year. So just give us your gig list and yeah. we'll try and book yeah, the same weekend off. Yeah, that'd be good. So I'm sometimes like that when you have a weekend off gigs. You're like, oh, I'll go and watch some music. And then you're like, I can't actually, actually, I should yeah. probably just chill out. Yeah, you know? just like, have yeah. a weekend off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so moving to London then um, with your vocal, vocal. So what did you first sort of learn about the, like, with the course and stuff? It's quite a unique course, quite a niche course by the yeah, sounds of it. Not it's this... not just musical studies, is it? It's, it's vocal performance. So. Yeah, so it's like... Um, you get like band practice and how to like communicate within a band and do it professionally and then you get like we've had like um, in, in-ear mm. um, lessons Honest. and that's so weird have you ever done in-ear I use them yeah we're just yeah. starting to yeah. use them yeah. yeah oh I hate it I there's was, so like, much to it though that's I can hear every single mistake yeah, that my yeah, voice yeah. makes and I'm like this is awful yeah. and then I listen back and I'm like it actually doesn't even no, sound that bad no. um, it's one of them as well where I, I was having this discussion yesterday because I'm still getting used to them I've spent quite a lot of money on these in-ears they're very yeah, good they're very high fidelity ones. yeah but, but like you say you hear everything and uh, sometimes it's like when you when you sing louder and the higher notes, it's a bit strange in your ears yeah. as well, isn't it? It's so like, weird. If yeah. the level's wrong, you just start to hear distortion. You're like, I hope yeah. that's not coming through. Yeah, on the yeah. End. yeah you, you literally house. don't know, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like with my gigs, I love like talking to the audience so much that yeah. I don't think. I could, it's I'd constantly weird. be taking it's them weird. out and putting them back in again. Yeah, that's what we're dabbling with is the, um, what do you call them, ambience mics. You put, point a microphone out and feed it into your ears. Oh, so really? So then you pick up the room because that's what you get, in it? You, you, you're in this bubble, aren't you? And yeah. you can't hear any of the audience. So if someone like throws a one-liner at you or something and you, you, you can't respond to it Yeah, you've no idea. Um, but yeah, so what... what um, what did you sort of start learning when you first first got to uni then? So when we got to uni, we started learning the business side of things because um, that's like such a hard thing to wrap your head around. Like, yep. do you know, like um, like royalties and things oh, yeah. like that and getting contracts and Spotify and how to get your music out there. And we started learning that and that was actually really interesting because... Right, yeah. 
it's you you don't even like know you like you just think oh i'm gonna put a song out and i'm gonna get money from it but actually it's so much more than that mm. it's like you have to get this this many streams to even get any money on it but then also it's like you only get about 10p anyway mm. like if you get a thousand streams you're not getting a, as much money as you would think what is it um numerically is it like uh, a- i think it's like 0.010p or something like that it's not even that yeah. many plays for that that's that's per play oh so right. when you're not point not 10p it's something like that it's not so it's, it's not even like one one penny no it's not a penny a play <laughs> it's like a but i think with spotify as uh, someone explained it to me if you own your own masters and publishing then basically you get a quid every a thousand plays oh. on it so effectively it ends up working out at roughly about three quid every a thousand plays wow. if you own all your copyrights and everything so it is a bit it's it's, it's, it's good and it's not because yeah. there's the statistics on the Spotify website where it's like, I think it said like 10% of our um, artists earn over 5 mil just on Spotify. But I'm like, that's like you Beyonce. That's, yeah, that's, that's Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Yeah. That's Justin Bieber. Yeah. Like nobody, no young, like small artist is 10% is sounds much. quite big though, doesn't it? Yeah, no, but then if you think about it, they've got about... Yeah. 4.5 yeah. billion yeah. artists yeah. on there so there's it's it's not much in hindsight no. but i think it's just about getting getting it out there and i've i've gone through a phase where i'm like when i when my song comes out i'm just going to print off loads of um like pre-order pre 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 save things mm. and just put them around every like tube station in yeah. London and just like every port like lamppost I can see because yeah. I always look I always stop and look at them and then just like oh let me just see what this is about do they so have I, like a QR code on it or something yeah you, you can, can just yeah. scan it and then, yeah. then you can see like there'll be a preview clip of it mm. on yeah there for, for I'm you fully to gonna do that as, as like obnoxious and vain as yeah. that is I'm like I just want my music it's funny you should say that because I've literally had that same thought about our podcast because I've just started printing these QR code posters yeah I put one in my mum and dad shop that's just down the oh, road and I idea. thought why don't I just stick him in random places around surely and then yeah. make like a video of it or something like can you find him or whatever yeah, like, <laughs> it's like, who's this... going to go out there hunting on a Monday <laughs> afternoon like, <laughs> a kid's treasure hunt like yeah. with that, that yeah. I'd actually I'd fully do that yeah, that'd yeah, be so yeah. fun yeah so so do they it, it, on this course are they sort of preparing you so say like you're just a, I know you're not a cover singer but if is it more for the original um, artists is, is that more what the um, course is for are you saying about royalties and stuff yeah it it depends so like they, they train you to be they, they ask you what you want to do so if you want to be a session musician right. they'll they'll be a part of the course for that if you want to just be a solo artist they'll be a part of a course for that a recording artist um so it like it's quite good because you, you there's so many different pathways you can go down like as a singer i could be like i could be um, a ghost vocalist where i just Put, give somebody my voice but like another singer would take it as their own I see. do you know what i mean yeah. like if if there's a song that like um a singer can't do like they can't do like a bit of a, a key like you they would pay somebody to sing oh, really? that i didn't even the, know that existed it's like ghost vocalist right. so like you would pay somebody to s- imitate that singer but also hit that right. note it's, what, it's, so it's, even just like a like a, a second snippet of a song yeah it could just be like so they sing 99% of it but there's just that one part that yeah needs. yeah oh, right. is that what happens when like you know when shops don't pay for the PRS license and then you can tell it's someone else singing like that popular yeah. song I think is it that so, sort maybe, of thing yeah, yeah. or it, it's more it's more popular for like people that have written like songwriters and if if that if they've sold that song to somebody else and the person that they've sold it to can't quite hit that note the songwriter will come in and just be like wow. this is how it's meant to sound yeah. and you could do that but i don't want to do that oh you there's like you could be like just like a session musician like i say and just go in for like recording studios and do bits and give ideas of different songs or you could they train you to be like a solo artist where you just sing like y- your own gigs and like play for your own yeah. audience and stuff so yeah that's that's what i'm looking at but they, they do just teach you like everything there's been parts where i'm just like this is like mind numbing and this is so boring and i don't need to do this like i'm more of the business side but <laughs> i guess it's worth it in the long run uh, i mean for, even for social media marketing and stuff like that you, oh yeah you have to you have to do that really so one of my one of my tutors is called uh chris cavellio i can't remember his last name um he's like 
the greatest social media marketer person that I've ever met. Like right. he knows everything about it, um, like the ins and outs. And he's got his own blog that he writes right. about all the stuff on. And I like take every word that he says as like gold dust because yeah. I'm like, you are, I need this so badly. Because I'm crap on social media. Like, yeah. Because I'm such a grandma and you wouldn't even expect it because I'm only like 19. I'm so bad with social media. Like, I, can't, I just, I it, can't even do it. I'm the same. It's not even that I'm bad at it. It's can't be arsed with it. Yeah, I'm just so. like, like, I'm trying, like with TikTok, I'm trying to get that out there and I do a lot of like, that like come with me's and stuff. Yeah. But I'm just like, is anybody even bothered? <laughs> like, I'm bothered, but is anybody else? You've got to convince yourself that they are. And, yeah, and yeah. This is the delusionism then. Yeah, it? yeah. It's like, everybody's obsessed with me. This needs to be out there. Yeah. Is, is, there any, is there any tips um, for listeners that you've picked up from the social media uh, marketer that you can share with us that you think, think people would find useful? Well, that, or don't give away the secret. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Really, but yeah. <laughs> um, I think it is just like the delusionalism of like, people like you feel like nobody wants to hear, hear you but also like so many people do like because even I, I'll do it sometimes where I, I have a friend from home who's like got quite big on TikTok and she does like day in the lives and I'm like so interested I'm like what's she doing today like yeah. I need to see this it's so interesting and then I, I like forget that like wait a minute that's like what I'm doing like yeah. I people there is people that are interested in what what you're doing and it's not just like you're not just doing it for yourself. Like there will be a, a market of people that do want to watch what you're doing and like are interested in your stuff. So I think it. I think that's probably absolutely the yeah. biggest one. So were you songwriting before you went to uni? Uh yeah, I I, I did songwrite, but um, I, I like dabbled. So like my my song that's coming out in September, I wrote that literally. I think about four years ago and I, I got music with it but I've never actually really thought about doing anything with it since until I so went to uni. So it's been four years in the making and you've had that yeah, idea sat there. Yeah, yeah and it's just always been like should I shouldn't I and then I got to uni and we have like all the the recording studios just available to use and I met. You can just so, pop in can you? And, yeah you oh. book it and you can just pop in like oh. um they're, they're in partnership with the Metropolis Studios. I don't know if you know where that is. Wow. And, oh, my God, I went there the other day. It was, like, the best day of my life. <laughs> like um, kid in a sweet shop sort of Yeah, stuff, I yeah. walked... Because... So, I, like, I went on the Tuesday, and on the Monday, Harry Styles had posted that he'd been there with oh, wow. Elton John. <laughs> and I was like, I missed him by 12 hours. Wow. Like, what the hell? Um, and that was, like, a crazy moment. We went in with... Um, it was, like, a, a pop-up, like session with bill and ted they're like producers um they do like house music and they, they like invited a few of us in and we went and it was like it was like this is the spotify studio and this is the amazon music studio wow. i was like what the hell is this, this is like so crazy wow. um so yeah they, like there is just you can book the metropolis studio as well if you want to sing in it but it's like always like full up yeah. but the ones in uni are, are like just as good they're really good so and then i met a few producers and we we just got on really well so we've kind of like done it the songs just come alive from that. Um, so is that part of the course or is that kind of like extracurricular kind of... It, it's not... The, the writing of the songs isn't part of it and the making of the music, but it is like, basically, it, 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 you'd be pointless if you went and there was all this stuff and you, wasn't, you didn't use you didn't it. Use well, it's it. funny you should say that because I, I, I mean, I had no interest in doing it now, but I studied... I mean, I'm nearly 30 now, but when I was 18, I studied uh, journalism at uni. Oh, did you? And that was at Salford Keys, you know, where all the, um, what's it called? Uh, I should know. I studied there. Um, <laughs> Media City. Oh, yeah. Um, and you didn't have, it was obviously ITV, BBC, all these. But we were just put in a building, like, yeah. to study. And you never got access to any of that stuff. So it's cool how you actually that's are able shame, to. Though. Oh, it was awful. Yeah, it was crap. But that's, a, that's another thing for another day. Really. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it was. It, so it's good that you're actually getting access to these yeah, things. Yeah, it was yeah. amazing. It's, it's really good. Like, I'd, I wouldn't have done as much as what I'm doing now if we didn't have the space. And especially with, like, the people is a big thing as well. Like, knowing the people as well is, like, crazy. Like, one of my tutors at uni... Oh my God, Brian Henry. He, you, I don't know if you know him, but in my mind, he's such a legend. He's like, one. Of, I was like starstruck when I met him. Like he was on Top of the Pops 1991. Right. Like he's a pianist and he's worked with like Stevie, uh, who's, no, he's not worked. He's worked with um, the Jacksons. And like, I don't know if you know, do you know Omar? It's, it's like that. There's nothing like this. It's a song. I'm not sure. Is Omar an artist? Yeah. He's, he's one of my... That song is one of my favourite songs on the planet. Right, okay. I get the impression I've heard him, but I'm not thinking of somebody else. But. A lot of people have heard him, but, like, 
they've well, heard his it. music, but they don't know that it's yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this oh, is going to sound ridiculous. Who sang Icebox? Icebox. I swear that was Omar or Omarion or something like that, but it's I probably not the know. same. Is he more soulful? Is he? Is he? Is is yeah? He's like. Nah, it he's won't like be the same thing. Then. Soul, yeah. yeah. Um, but like, and he's 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 worked with like soul to soul. Right. He's worked with so many people, and like his what he says to me, I'm just like in awe all the time. Um, so yeah, it's definitely about like the people that you know as well, because I I'm constantly like he's. he's been work. He's worked with so many people, and every time I see he's worked with somebody else, I'm like, oh, just slip my name in there, please. I'm like, Brian, just tell him that you know someone really good, and tell him like with Omar, like he's got pictures on his Instagram with Omar, and I'm like, Brian, please tell him that you know me. Like, I want to meet has this guy. Ever, so has he ever like, popped your name in there? Has he? Right? No, he doesn't even. He don't even care. He's like, he's not even because to him it's just like his mate. Yeah. And I'm like, he's such a cool guy. What the hell? It seems like on this course, so you you re- you're really inside the industry. Oh almost. yeah, massively. Do you find that um do you find that like inspiring obviously you will find it inspiring but is it also a bit overwhelming as well because you're surrounded by all probably all these multi-talented people well yeah because i've always been like like even at college i was with a lot of like really talented people but i've always been like i don't want to say like the top but no, like I, mean, i've yeah. always been like a big a big fish in a small pond whereas like here it's like everybody is like just as talented mm. as me and it's like wow I, at first I was overwhelmed because I was like what if I'm not good enough to be here like do I just need to stick in my own lane but now I'm just like everybody feels the same like they, right. they all feel the same as me because I've spoken to so many people and they were like oh well she's more talented than me and I don't sound like that so maybe I shouldn't be here everybody feels the same so it's just like I'm, I'm not bothered anymore I think that's the thing when you get into that mindset I think I learned to go well I can do that and they can't do yeah. that. So everyone's got a Achilles a heel. Niche. Yeah, absolutely. And that that's like something you have to like play on it as well because it's like <laughs> finding like the, the the unique part of you like as an artist, like what you're unique for is actually quite difficult and finding yeah. like who you are as a singer. Yeah. Like I feel like I, I'm only just learning who I actually am as like mm. an artist and I'm still quite young anyway. So it's like it's, it is difficult. But once you get it, it's like... You have to just run with it. The other thing is, I think you've kind of got to eliminate that competition part because you're yeah, not competing against absolutely. them. Absolutely. As much as you feel like you should be. Yeah. But it's also like we're all here to learn the same thing. Yeah. And like whoever makes it, makes it. And whoever doesn't, like, they You're they still don't. set up for a career in you, music regardless. So, yeah, everybody's yeah. getting the yeah. same amount of, like, help. It's just whoever uses that right and yeah. takes it the, the right way. So, so do you feel do you feel like the course is designed to help you succeed? I know it sounds stupid, but a lot of these uni courses feel like they just go through the motions and yeah. stuff. Whereas I mean, sometimes you do think like, is this really like, is this necessary? Am I am I even doing anything here? Like, is, is or is it a tick box? Me? Yeah, yeah, tick box. Tick yeah. box. Am I just like another name on a register? Mm. But then. I then you th- I think about like the facilities that I get to use that yeah. maybe not aren't in the course but I've got them at my hands all the time and the people that I've met you just think it's it's worth it definitely. even if even if I don't feel like it right now it's definitely going to be worth it at some point absolutely so um, what's the general life like in London then as, as a budding musician I love London yeah. so much my grandma keeps asking me to move back and I'm like <laughs> I'm never moving back London's like my place now like. Because I'm such a city, as much as I live in, like, a town, I love the city so much. I'm, like, so, like, constantly running at 100 miles an hour. <laughs> so I love it. And But I'm, like, you can still tell that I'm from a small town because I'll walk around London and I'll, I'll just be, like, looking and I, like, walk with leisure and I'm just really slow and everyone's, like, running past me and barging <laughs> into me. And I'm just, like, oh, my God, girl, calm down. <laughs> I'm so, like, chilled about it. How do people respond to your accent? Because we've got quite strong accents over here, haven't we? This is what, so this is a big thing, you know. Yeah. Everybody, like, loves it, first of all. But um, <laughs> the only thing that ever, anybody talks about me talks to me about in london is the way that i talk and i'm like oh let's just can we just have another conversation please they'll be like how do you say balm cake how do you say (laughs) bread roll and i'm like it's a tea cake let's be honest but it's like such a conversation constantly about my accent or like they'll take the piss out of it and i'm like oh it's not just not funny anymore is it i had it once i was in um a bar 
And fun, there's a few bars in London where they have like just chess tables out and you can just play chess like whilst you're having a pint. It's dead weird. <sighs> and I was sat there playing chess and I, I, I was like getting a bit rowdy because chess, do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah it's a very intense game. <laughs> I'm shit at chess. Oh, can I? Sw- no, go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I'm shit Have at chess. Have you not chess. sworn this whole episode? I think I've said crap or something. Oh, <laughs> I was trying yeah. my hardest. Oh, my grandma might No, it's, a, it's free reign. Yeah, you're good. Um, yeah, I'm crap at chess, right? So... But I, I, even though I'm crap at it, I really get into it. Like, I'm well good, even though I am literally don't know what's going where. Yeah. So I was getting proper into it. And then this guy next to me, who was on another table with his mate, and he were from Somerset or something, and other one were from Brighton or something, I don't know. <laughs> and they were like, I could hear him next to me. He was like, right, I'm just going to put this piece here. Wow. And I was like, it's funny when you talk to me about it, but when you're doing it, yeah. like to somebody else it's just not funny yeah, yeah, yeah. and I just kept giving him the, the eye and I was like why why are you like <laughs> laugh with me like I will laugh with you yeah, but it's yeah. just not funny anymore and I was so tempted to just like flip the board up and just like ruin the game but I didn't because you know I'm a good person stay classy yeah. but like just since ever since that I've been like oh the niches the the um what's the word well, yeah. The the, the, it's gone now. Novelty. The funny, the, yeah, the mm. novelty of my accent's I'm gone now. Smith. I'm just like, I've been here for too long. Just get yeah. over it. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I found myself when I moved up up that way, taking the piss out of one of my mates from Burnley because he's got a really strong Burnley accent. Like, yeah, people think I'm putting it on. Yeah, I sometimes. mean, yours isn't that... It's it, not as strong as is. Do you know geez. what? You're the first person to say that. Well, yeah, it's because my girlfriend's got quite a strong, like, Rosendale accent. Oh, there. yeah. It's similar, what though, they, isn't it? What do they say from there that's really weird? Um, like, farm... Charm, farm. Arm. Oh, like, it's yeah. like a farmer, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah. When I first met her, I thought she was from like I Somerset friend, or something. I knew someone from Rosendale who used to be like, um, yeah, like yeah, farm, farm and like, yeah, that's yeah, weird. Funny, no, I don't know how we've digressed to this. But. No, no, it's quite, fu- it's quite funny because I, I, I actually moved up to the northwest from Ipswich, lived in Runcombe for five years, but yeah, I've always been an outsider wherever I've been, really, with my accent. <laughs> yeah, um, but. It was quite weird moving to Lancashire and just hearing someone in a supermarket going, Hello, Mark. Hello, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like, I'm like, hello, Mark. I'm yeah. a bit, my, I, yeah. I extend my vowels a bit more. <laughs> I love my accent. It's like my oh, favourite yeah, yeah, thing about me. Yeah. I love a Burnley accent. <laughs> how, do you say, how do you say tea cake, though? What is it? What Bomb. is it? Bomb. Bomb. Oh, that, that'll boring. be the wrong corn side of me because it's yeah. Well, this is the, is the long. I have this conversation everywhere because I love it. I'm like, it's definitely like a bread roll. Oh yeah. What so you'd say like a chip tea cake? Well, I'd say a chip butter. Oh yeah. But yeah. it'd be like yeah, it's like on a tea cake <laughs> because it's like the fruit tea cake and then you take the fruit out. It's just a tea cake. Right. I see. Okay. Yeah, I've got, but we have such bad. I have. I've had so many arguments with people about like bread rolls and stuff. <laughs> no, you're <laughs> it's wrong. A fucking tea cake. <laughs> Uh, is that where some of your um, songwriting influences come from then? <laughs> yeah, tea cake. So how long have we got here? Um, God, yeah, I reckon we take a quick break um, and then we'll go into some of your songwriting and how that's developed. Yeah. We'll have a part four. Why not? Yeah. Why not? We'll Let's go into it. another two-hour episode and yeah. we'll see you soon. Yeah, 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 baby. See you in a minute. Cheers. Hello, it's me, Preston's biggest dick, and I'm not talking about my attitude problem. Help! I need somebody! Well, Tony at Timpan Alley Guitars helps. He's very good for your services, setups, part replacement, and much, much more. I've had many of my guitars fixed by Tony, just from his house in his little workshop, and he does a fantastic job. So, to find out more about it, go onto Tony's Facebook page, Tony Helps, or type in Timpan Alley Guitars on Facebook, and you will see the range of guitars that Tony has fixed and also put together himself. He also does charity auctions to raffle off guitars that he has fixed up, all for good causes. So, without further ado, go and check him out. Back to the episode. To not world. Just angle yourself slightly that way. This way? No, 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 other way. Oh. Uh, ever so slightly. Back, back a little bit. That's better, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah cool. Okay. <laughs> we'll keep that in. Yeah. <laughs> you bouncing around. <laughs> yeah. Right, welcome back. We're going to talk a little bit about your songwriting then. So you're releasing a song in September, yes. your first original tune that will be out there to the world. Yeah. So um, what's the song called for stars? It's called I've Been Blue. Okay. It's about 
men. <laughs> right. Not just men in general, like a certain, you know, type of men. Yeah. But um, it was meant to come out in May last this year. But I got, uh, like, I had all these instruments on it and I'm such a perfectionist when it comes to my own stuff that I was like, I've just scrapped it all and I was like, we're redoing everything. Yeah. So I'm good, a few more, like, studio sessions and it'll, it'll be out. But, um, yeah, there was, like, because I've got, like, um, a sax solo in the middle of it, mm. which I'm so happy I got because what song do you know nowadays that has, like, a full-on sax yeah. solo? I'm so excited about it. It sounds amazing. But um, there were just, like, bits that I didn't, I didn't really like, so we're going to do that again. So yeah, it's out in September, which I'm really excited about because I don't know, it's exciting. It's like never but it's exciting. This is the one that somebody said that um, like it wouldn't go. Yeah, it wouldn't that, go out. It wouldn't well. go anywhere because of of the way that it's written and things. Ah, I see. But I'm just I'm not even but I'm not even taking that into account because I'm like I'm a young person of today that loves this kind of music. Definitely. So. I'm sure there'll be a lot more people like me out there that loves this this sort of stuff, like 100%. you know, like soul jazz. Yeah. So, your process for writing this one, what was it? Because you said it was like four years in the making. Were yeah. you just getting lyric ideas and melody ideas initially? And just well, so I went through like a rough patch with somebody, um, and I was on holiday at the time, and I was like, it was like my birthday, and I was meant to be having a really good time, but I felt awful and. It was just not cute. And I was like, I'm just going to... I was actually in the shower, as cliche as that sounds. I was like, I'm just going to write. And I, I was like, singing the first line, because there's no music at the start of it. It's just like me singing. Um, and I was like, whoa, that sounds like actually really cool. That could be something. Um, and it just went on from there. And I, I, I had a chorus and I had a f the first two verses and I couldn't get the bridge. And um, I didn't get the bridge until... I moved to London and I, it was the guy who said it wasn't going to be good helped me <laughs> write the bridge. So I was like, what? Um, but yeah, so I got the bridge and it was really good and I loved it. And it was just like the, the process of going in the studio and singing it with everybody was like so exciting and like surreal and I loved it. So yeah, that's coming out in September, which I'm really excited about. So when you went into the studio, did you found, find that you heard it differently in your head to how it actually sounded? Yeah, because I'd never heard the drum bit on it before. And because I was like, right, just write a drum piece and I'll listen to it in the studio. And he did it and it sounded so good. And he used like, um, it's not a real drumstick. It's like a stick with like loads of different, it's like leather kind of. It looks a bit like a whip. Oh, uh, what do they call it? You know what I mean, don't yeah. you? Was it brushes or was it um, yeah. hot rods? I like, think it was brushes. Right. Maybe. Mm. Um, and there was a part where it like transitioned from the verse to the chorus and he like did like a crescendo sound with mm. it and it sounded so good. And I was like, this is all coming That's together. Wicked, yeah. I'm so excited. And then um, the guitar was like a guitar solo because it's a really weird layout i've not just done classic like verse chorus verse bridge i've done like verse chorus verse and then like guitar solo that then went into a sax, a sax solo, solo and right, then it yeah. was the bridge so it was all like is it a long song then What's no the it's only like four minutes okay, but yeah. the, the guitar solo is only eight bars and so is the ah, sax yeah. so it yeah, and then my bridge is only eight bars so um yeah it's it's different but i'm really excited about it Brilliant. and it, it did it come it sounds exactly as I expected it to sound, which is so weird. Because when I well, when I presented the song to Liam, I was like, <laughs> "You should see the video that I sent him." I was like, I sang it, and then I was like, "Bow now!" I was like doing the piano, oh, and I, I was like, that. "This is exactly what I need it to be like." And he got it straight away. He did it on guitar first, and I was like, "Yeah, that's fine, but do it on the piano." And he he got it just like that. Yeah. And it was like, how how did you just take what was in my mind and put it in a piano? I was going to ask then, you about that because obviously. I'm not a massive um, uh, instrumentalist and you aren't either. Yeah. So it, like you say, it all comes from just the mind and, and vocal ad-libs. And... Yeah, I was, because I, I said to him, I was like, Liam's really good at doing intros of songs where he'll just do like a, do -do 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 -do, like a cr weird thing on the piano. So yeah. I was like, I want that. And then I want you to stop playing and I want to do my first line, which is just, I've been blue. And then... And it was, and he got it, and I was like, "What? What on earth?" Sort of, I just yeah. don't understand the mind of musicians. <laughs> it is, it is a strange thing. Like recently, I did my first um, studio recording, and I sort of gone in there. Right, the producers are going to have a different idea of how to capture the character yeah. of this, and there's that sense of 
like you said, there's a perfectionist idea. You've heard this song in a certain way and you want it to be like yeah. that. So I went in with this idea. It was going to be sort of like a a pop rock with an element of country and rockabilly in there. Yeah, oh, that sounds But amazing. the producers, the producers like turned it into something yeah, different. It was actually that. more my style oh, anyway. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So it was just like every time we tried these little country licks we had a slide guitar in there and it yeah. just didn't work well that's so, that's it, what it was like with me because i had um i met one producer who was amazing and he'd done like so many disco like like just not like grime <laughs> like because a lot of producers nowadays love like drill and grime mm. and, it's, and obviously that's not yeah. right for me so i was like i met this one guy and he'd done a few he'd done like a 60s track and he'd done like a disco one and i was like oh, this guy is perfect and um, he just didn't seem like he was as bothered by it. And he didn't seem as, like, passionate about my song. And I was like, mm. I love this song way too much to work with somebody that is not that bothered. And he didn't really he didn't really have many, like, um, like things to add to it, which I guess is good because, like, I want it the way that I want it. But also it's like, as a producer, you, wanna, you want their ideas in too because they know yeah. how to put make the song... A song basically yeah. where yeah they're arranging it and completing yeah, the song exactly and then I, I met another guy um alex jackson he's was like perfect like i've never worked with somebody as like seamless as him like he got exactly what i wanted he knew when there was like a bit on the sax that he knew that i wouldn't like he just took it out and he didn't even need to ask me because he knew that i wouldn't like it anyway like we it's it's, it's musical chemistry is such a big thing yeah. i feel like and as stupid as that sounds like like me and liam Obviously not romantic partners, but our musical chemistry is so good. Yeah. And everybody, every, when we're gigging, everyone's like, are you two together? <laughs> and we're like, no, we're just like singing together. But musical chemistry is so important when you're making yeah. like music that Definitely. you want to make. Definitely. Um, have, have, how many sessions have you actually done and how many differences, differences of opinion have there been with you and the producer? So sessions, we've done about probably five but one of them was really long. One of them we did like the full day because we got we got drums, guitar, and um, drums, guitar, and vocals in one whole day, which is quite a lot because um, I don't know, there's just a lot to do in a day. Yeah. And then we did like backing vocals in another session, which I got a few girls from like a few of my friends to do on there. Um, so there was about three backing vocals on one day and then we got sax on another day and then another day we did like mixing um so there's been about five and then and there was no really like conflict because i i like trusted him that he knew what he was doing and he trusted me that i knew what i wanted so it was really good in that way um and like difference of opinion i've i've like shown clips of the songs to different people with different interests just to see what they've they thought of it and it's always been like unanimous like this is so like like a new vibe for today but also like we love it so i'm quite think, happy about that i think that is the thing because obviously when you're working with a producer you generally want someone that knows what they're doing and how what's going to work for radio play because that's what's going to make your money at yeah, the end of the day absolutely. and the one thing i wasn't sure about is if anything was going to be cut from the track yeah. like so from the structure how how i'd done it and half of my second verse got taken out so they go right it's up to you which line do you think needs to be taken out but it needs to move on here yeah and like i wanted the whole first verse to have no drums in there or whatever and they're like no no it needs to drive it needs yeah. something driving it now so you, you have to almost not be too precious have you like obviously you seem like it was quite lucky it was quite it, yeah it was but there's there were so there was a moment where um have you ever heard such a random like a, song that i'm gonna give you now but have you ever heard um uh hit em up style by it's called Shan chantel not sure is that Could hey ladies if you men want to get a book well, yes you know it. yes right so that whole song is so like r&b mm. cool like pop is so good and but then there's a bridge where it's like completely stripped back and she just is like really emotional and then yep. she gives it her all i wanted that to be the bridge because the whole song is is really emotional and like really heartbreaking but then it's really it's a weird vibe it's like heartbreaking emotional you want to cry but also like you like slay queen like good for you <laughs> it's so weird <laughs> yeah but um so i wanted the bridge to be like so different from the rest of it because 
I feel like it's like quite interesting if yeah. it's like, and it was like quite, the bridge was more stripped back than the rest vocally anyway, like lyrically as well. So I did want that and it, it was really difficult to know, to like explain that to somebody else because the everything he got, but then it was just like that one little bit that I needed to be different. And the same with the saxophone. I wanted it to be like, she, she, the saxophone, player that I got she was amazing but she was being she was quite um relaxed at the start of the saxophone solo but I was like no I want you to punch us with the saxophone like I just want it to be like crazy straight away because there's throughout the whole song there's a backing of saxophone but then I wanted it to be like really in your face in the Brit in the like solo um and that was another thing where it was like a bit of a challenge because I was like, yeah. I don't know how to tell you because I can't play the saxophone yeah. and I don't know how to tell you that. I, just I wanted to be like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> 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 it's like hard like, to like describe. No, like you almost wanted that like little bite where it almost starts to distort yeah. a little bit. Yeah, like I wanted it just to be like, whoa, there's a saxophone playing. Yeah, we, yeah. We, it's been there the whole time, what? Um, but we we fixed that and it's like, sounds really good now. So. so fans of what artists would be interested in listening to this song that's coming out? Um, um, probably, I say this all the time, but like Aretha Franklin every time, Etta James, Jocelyn Brown, um, Amy Winehouse probably, no. maybe. It's a bit more old, old, it's a bit more classic than Amy, not classic, but like old school. Um, but anybody that loves like that that kind of era is just probably going to like Wicked, it. it sounds it's, interesting. It's more of like a modern take to it because it's like, the lyrics, the uh, songwriting back in the day was very much like, you know, like, I'm a woman and I should love a man this way. Whereas my, the lyric, the lyrically it's very different. But I see. Vibe, it's. Yeah. I think Aretha broke that sort of yeah. boundary, didn't she? Because at first it was like, oh, I have to, I have to serve my man almost, like yeah. you say. And then Aretha was like, no, well, there, I'm me. You're going to fucking respect absolutely, me. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. There was one song by Aretha where I was like, girl, that's not you. But then I realised it's just a cover. There was one song, it's um, uh, Mr. Feelgood or Dr. Feelgood. Right. Um, and that's about like treating your man the way that a man should be treated. <laughs> and I'm just like, that does not sound like Aretha, but she didn't even write it, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so are you getting all that um, access to studio as as part of your course is that uh, one of the perks yeah, of being on the just, that's wicked that isn't it's it it's really good obviously the cost of actually going and getting your music recorded if you're not at uni is, is well, mad isn't it you know yeah. your, your experience well, as well I mean like most most places are probably about 300 quid mine mine because they've they've got to a certain level I don't know if you've heard of the band Viola Beach at all um, what do they play they were they, well, they were about uh, early 2012 to about 2016 right um Unfortunately, there was an incident where they were on tour, on a European leg of the tour in Sweden. The tour bus came off a mountain, so they've unfortunately passed away. All of them? But Yeah, all yeah. of them, including the manager as well. Um, but they had, a, so they had a couple of hits. So there was one there that says, Boys That Sing. Um, yeah. And Coldplay actually did a cover of it at Glastonbury to sort of... Like, honour him? Yeah. Oh, that's um, and their album, I think, went to number one. So my producers actually produced that record in just this little studio in St. Helens. Oh, really? Yeah, so I'm paying a premium price, but I know these guys know what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So it is the price you pay. But even still, like, £300 for one session yeah. is a lot. And you think I did, like, five sessions for one, one song. Do you feel yeah. that pressure to get your music made yeah, now? I'm because when you leave, obviously, it's like, nope. Yeah, <laughs> I'm stressed. I'm like, I need to do like as much as I can whilst I'm here, like just, I'm like serial writing music at the minute. Yeah. I'm like trying to get as much out as I can. I do know a lot of people with home studios, which is like so good, but yeah. it's never going to be the same at home studio. Yeah, it yeah. depends get, what style of music and how much yeah, you've actually got in that home get, studio. You can get a really good quality in a home studio. And if you work with like really talented people that you can, it's amazing. Yeah. But it feel, it just feels more like legit when you're in a real studio, <laughs> doesn't it? Like one thing I've never done, and I'd probably encourage anyone to do it. Like I'd always done stuff from a home studio or someone else's home studio beforehand. Um, I'd had like a stu one studio recording with another band. Yeah. But one thing I do think makes a massive difference that you may not have even thought about yet um, is mastering. Oh, yeah. And mastering, mastering, like, you can pay, like, you can start it. It starts from, like, 30 quid, depending who you're going with. But 
I had a mix and you you were like listening to it and you go like I feel like the band's driving like like the overpowering you. wasn't your, there in your vocals yeah. I thought, before it, wasn't it was mastered, sticking out yeah, yeah. and then the master come back and it was like all the clarity of every other yeah. instrument was there it's crazy isn't it and like they were all like the the studio the producers even said to me right now obviously if you can't afford it don't do it but we recommend everyone that you get a master done because sometimes it's just like that second set of ears yeah. that can just make the, the one bit you want to pop out pop out so I would say yeah, to you that's such a good idea actually do that mm. do it um, I, I've worked with a, I, well I didn't work with him himself I sent a game, the track to a guy called Pete Meyer yeah. and he's in America he does a lot of live uh, masters so he's done masters for David Bowie Liam Gallagher Sam Fender Christ. and I think do you know what like he does it for 30 quid for uns- unsigned artists. Really? So I was like... What a guy. I, I had was... to do it. I had to do it. I had to do two because I had a swear, I had a swear in there. So I needed something for radio. Yeah. But for 60 quid, it's... considering I've just, I just paid 700 quid for my recording. Yeah. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. And you think, well, why, if I can, if I'm paying that, I want this to sound the best it Absolutely, does. Yeah. So That's I'd recommend probably, you're not going to have the costs get your track mastered because it does make a hell of a difference yeah, and it's just only a, sw- a slight tweak that made yeah. it yeah. pop out so how many years have you got left at uni then two years two after years uni. and uh, is your plan to stay in london afterwards yeah i yeah. think so i think whilst i'm young i want to be in london because what a place to live in whilst yeah. you're like young and it, as expensive as it is like it's so worth it like the experiences that i've had is just mad yeah not even just with people but like the places that I've been and just, just things that I've done is just like just so different to being in Manchester. As much as I love Manchester, it's not this. It's like ten times bigger. And oh, I love I love London. Love London will like be in my heart forever. <laughs> but um, I think once I once I get a bit older, I might start to like move out of the city. Or you know, if I like end up moving to another, I, I think. I don't know. I, it depends where, where my life goes and yeah. where my career goes. Do you think there's the, it seems like an obvious question, but are all the opportunities there as well for oh, your music? Yeah. There's more than... well. It's and in hard. what way are there more opportunities? It, with the people, I think. Yeah, networking, yeah. With the people there, there's yeah. so many opportunities. And, like, just... like th- It's so strange, but, like, the inspiration is there. <laughs> like, yeah. I love Burnley, and I, it's always going to be my number one, but there's like it feels so dull musically <laughs> there is such good like that like, i'm not saying like oh my god there's so many good bands coming out of burnley and like the music the the um if you go to like bars or anything there's always going to be like an amazing yeah. band on but like inspiration to like make my own music is so dull because yeah. it's like i feel like it's just like I've, I, I feel like trapped in Burnley. that like, makes sense yeah you've i got, did get that yeah yeah you've got you've got people around you all the time that yeah, you, it, yeah whereas in london it's like yeah. everybody's musically minded because i'm around them people all the time yeah. so it's like i've got some all the time if you have an idea you can just spin it off someone quickly yeah all definitely around you as well. that makes sense yeah i think the sense. other thing is obviously we we probably notice it if you go into a pub around here and there's live music on it's going to be an indie rock band a classic yeah. rock band or like a backing track singer or an acoustic artist. Yep. You're going to get one of four things. Yeah, you absolutely. go into cities, you get Irish acts, you get funk and yeah, soul bands. And that's you what get... I love. There's like so many like different things that you, you go in one bar and then the next eight bars is something completely different to what you've just listened to. Yep. And it's amazing. I love it. So we, we had this discussion with Lee, Lee Jones, didn't we? A while back about him saying, this was more like in the eighties and nineties with original music, you could, it was thriving in London. Do you notice that you go into a bar and they're actually singing their own tunes as well? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, probably back in the 80s and 90s, it was probably thriving a lot more than yeah. it is like musically now. Cause I, um, I've not actually, there, there is always somewhere where you can, like there is always a bar with music playing, but um, with like originals and stuff, it's not as popular as you might think. No, not even you, in somewhere like London. It's still the covers, is it? When you're I going think in the so, bars, yeah. So, yeah. I haven't. I went to one gig in Putney, which was like one of my really good friends. She was playing. She's called Con Thirteen. She was playing in the, a gig in Putney, and there was a few other people in there, and that was like mostly so like uh, originals. And I think if you're looking, <coughs> if you're looking for originals, uh, you can find it. Yeah. But, um, 
yeah, if you just go into an average like pub down the road, they're probably going to be playing covers. Still be the covers, like, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Which I don't mind. I love a good cover. Yeah, well, yeah, cover. yeah. Um, so talk to us about this gig that you've got organised in London, where it's a mix of um, original music and um, covers as well. So they want us to do. It's like. Um, it's like a funky soul place. And as much as I love, like, I'm a soul singer, I'm such like a, I love a good funk, like, funky sound. And like, you know, like the, the bass lines. Yeah. I'm such, I like to just listen out for like really cool bass lines. So I love a good, uh, like, funk soul mix. So, um, yeah, they want to do it. I asked him, I was like, I do originals if, if you really want, if you want me to do a few. And he was like, yeah, yeah, we'd love it. He was like, so just chill about it. So I think we're going to do... I'm gonna get a. Um, I'm getting in the middle of like getting people together for a band because I want to go there with like a an actual like band of people rather than it just be me and a pianist. Yeah. So um, we're getting together a few like really like classic like soul funks and then I'm like serial writing all the. As right, much, I was gonna like, say because you've only got one song coming out at the minute, aren't you? Yeah. So you must be writing a lot. To... Yeah, and it's difficult as well because I'm just like a voice. So like the funk comes after with the musicians with guitars and, and the, the bass line yeah. so like that's really hard to like know what it's going to sound like so I think it'll all come to live like when I go and see them back again when I move back to London and I meet up with the musicians but hopefully how do you find um, we had George, uh, George just George on a couple of weeks ago depending on when this episode goes out it was actually last week we recorded it um, and she said it's really hard to get people together um, to create bands and duos and stuff yeah. I imagine in London that's a little bit more free it's easier in yeah. London especially where I am in uni everybody's up for experience and right, getting yeah. just doing a gig because like if somebody asks even if somebody asked me to do a gig in London I don't even if I don't even think I'd be bothered if it was paid like right, yeah. to an extent like yeah. if it was just like a, a favor I'd I'd be fine with just the like experience and the I insight see. of just being there I think and you think if that's it, a general uh, thought process with, million percent yeah because yeah. like, even with working on my song like everybody's been it's it's a, it feels like you're doing something for a friend like no one's I've been on songs and I've not ex been expected to be paid or put in the song because. I just know that we're all in the same boat and it's like yeah. no one in a unique And hopefully really afford... then you can call on them. Yeah, for exactly. Your stuff. It's like a favour for a yeah, favour. Yeah. So yeah, That's a it's a good way to look at it. It's 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 easier, I think, where in my situation to get people who want to play for you. Brilliant. I suppose it is a big risk for pubs these days to take on originals music because yeah. it's hard enough to get people into pubs anyway. Yeah, and I think that's why it's such a thing of like why people still only do originals unless you're like a bigger band it's like so difficult i think yeah i think as well like obviously in a place like london you are going to get those niche bars so that probably the reason why the guy was so chilled about doing original stuff is because that is a niche bar yeah. for funk soul and blues i think yeah. they, they are more open to it because it is about the music so yeah. as long as it's good they don't give a fuck what it is in most places like that but then when you're just in like a regular bar like the people don't don't want to listen to like the, mm. half of the people aren't even like wanting to listen to your music. They no. want to hear like Sweet Caroline <laughs> and like Mr. Brightside. They don't want to hear like <laughs> they want to just be yeah listening to like songs they've heard before. I thought the mentality would be a little bit different in London. I think um, it is a little bit in different. in like yeah. Central London, like yeah. Soho, yeah, yeah, and and things like that. It it, def it probably is. I I don't know. I I feel like I'm like speaking for the whole of well, London yeah. I'm like yeah. scared true, true. But, Soho, um, and, Soho and Camden have got their own vibe yeah, though, because it's culturally like it's different around there because obviously Soho just down the road you've got Kensington but it, and Leicester Square where it is like proper tourist area yeah but Soho like all the bars it's just a completely different vibe absolutely like they've got a, the Mexican restaurant uh, me and my missus went to in Soho was unbelievably, uh, and you would not get that in yeah. like a uh, Jimmy Chankers, yeah, for like, example. You like on Regent Street, and then two minutes down the road, it's like Chinatown, and it's like, yeah. how, like just so different. So everything, it, it's it's where you go. I feel like definitely to listen to music, it depends on the the place. So how do you have you ever just chucked an original track into one of your covers set at all? Yeah, we did. Uh, me and Liam do my my song we've played it loads I've been playing the one that's coming out in September yeah we've played it loads so they get the preview yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll send you some um, 
Yeah, we, I think we've probably played it about six or seven times now, and it always, and they love it. Everybody's like, whoa, is that your song? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> they like they, So I don't mind doing it because it's like, they can't, they, they, I think they appreciate it just if it's like one or two. Yeah. Because yeah. um, then I like hit them with like candy Staten straight after so they forget about it. Yeah, so how 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 do you find how did you find building up to that when you're first trying to introduce that song? Um well well I just I I was just like talking to the audience and I was like right I'm going to do an original now and then it like it got their attention actually because it was like whoa this is not what I signed up for but also like I'm excited. Um and I just like told the backstory of like why I wrote the song and what what it's about and um I think the audience was like quite interested, so they they loved it actually. But um, yeah, I think I think it was it was like a different. It's different because the, the other songs I was singing was like like I say like Billy Joel and like Aretha Franklin. We do like some Aretha Franklin songs, but if I did a full gig full of Aretha, I think I would die because I can't vocally sustain what she does all the time. <laughs> so we do like some easier songs throughout the gig. So it was like it was a big change, I think, from what we did before. No, I, I think I've found it where you sort of like, I feel like I have to get the good solid covers first. Yeah. And then maybe halfway through the second set, yeah. I'll just go, right, I'm going to do an original tune if that's all right with you. Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. We do. I think we did it at the start of our second set, like the first song. Oh no, we did, we play. We played Oh Darling in our last, in our last gig. We played Oh Darling by the Beatles at first just because... It's quite an attention grabby song. I love that song. And then we were just like, right, I'm going to change it up a bit. I'm going to play this. And <laughs> it was fine. I think they loved it. So, yeah. <laughs> I hope they loved it anyway. <laughs> I think we better have a little yeah, break Yeah, we'll have there. a little break there. And, uh, yeah, I think there might be another part to this as well. So, uh, yeah. We keep on moving. Yeah. Super. Right, see you in a minute. Hi there. How you doing? It's me, the legend that is. I'd just like to take a little bit of time out of the episode to promote a certain music shop that I've had really good experience with. So it is Blackstone Music and it's located in Heskin Shopping Village. Chris Bannister there has been really helpful to me. I had trouble a couple of years ago um, buying from a sort of commercial superstore one of my acoustic guitars. Um, so I went to Chris and ended up getting a completely new guitar. Ever since he's helped me with, you know, fixing bits and bats on the guitar and he's just a really helpful, friendly guy who's always got the time of day for you with music related questions and stuff like that. So big shout out to Blackstone Music. As I said, it's in Heskin Shopping Village. Go and have a look at it. It's got, they've got some great stuff there and some great service. Back to the episode. Right, I think we're on. Welcome back to the One More Songcast. This is our first part five, maybe. Yeah. Uh, right, well, it's been a long one, Jodie, hasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> right, good. but we've got a guest for you. Oh we've got God. a special guest. Please welcome the number one tribute act in the UK, Lady Gargle. What? Lady Gargle on the One More Songcast. You'll have to do me an intro song. All oh, right. Okay. It needs to be like um, like clapping. Uh, yeah, we'll have to do the clapping sound. <laughs> yeah. So, are you there, lady? Are you there, Lady Gargle? Hey, all right. It's, uh, it's me, Lady Gargle. <laughs> what are we doing? Oh, oh, yeah. well, oh, I'm back. It's been some time on it. Oh, it's been. It's great to see oh. you. What have you been up to? Oh well, I was at um, Burnley Miners Social Club on uh, <laughs> Saturday night, blasting out the tunes. You look all right. stunning. Oh, thanks. So. Fix me hair up. <laughs> How are we doing, Jordy? You all right? Really good, thanks. It's good to see uh, female performers in the business. <laughs> good, to, good to network. Yeah. Have you got any gigs it. for me in, uh, in Soho I could get involved with? Uh, maybe you could come I to I need my... to branch out. <laughs> you could maybe join one of mine. <laughs> what what songs would you sing? Oh, it'll have to be uh, Lady Gaga songs. That's all Obviously. I know. Oh, right, is that yeah. even a question? That's all I know. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm I just know. wondering what what's your favourite Lady Gaga song to sing? Oh, I'm trying to, bad romance. Oh, oh like, I love that one. I've like had a, a few bad, bad romances <laughs> in my time. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. <laughs> oh, there's some men I've met in Burnley. It, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Want me to help you with your yeah, hair? What's going on? I don't know what's happening here. Man. I'm having a wardrobe malfunction, I think. <laughs> so as you can see, I take good care of my vocal health. Yeah. Um, do a lot of um, gargling. Okay. Yeah. Have you? Uh, oh, Lady Gargle. Yeah. Have you? Uh, have you? Uh, 
<laughs> have you uh, quit smoking yet? Because you were talking about it. Um, it's it's on the to do list, uh, <laughs> but I just enjoy it so much. You yeah, know, I just, I just love the fumes. Well, how, how many are you on a day? <laughs> more, more than you'd care to imagine. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, anyways. Right, right, we're so gonna, we're I, gonna play a little game, aren't we? We are. Um, so Lee hires me to um, play a game, and it's called what is the game called? Lady Gargle's it's Gargle Game. Gargle that tune. And it's Gargle that tune. So I'm gonna gargle a tune for you. Okay. Best of three. So you and Lee are gonna go against each other, and you've got to guess the tune. I'm so excited. So I'm gonna gargle it out. <laughs> I'm gonna gargle it. Now, out. I don't know where the water's gonna go. I'm gonna have to swallow it. I think so. Uh, <laughs> 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 Which is one of my, my specialties. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got to think of a tune now, haven't I? <laughs> I'm not really come prepared. Right, let's have a look. Oh, this is going to be a tough one to, to do this, but uh, I do like to challenge myself vocally, so we'll give this one You've a go. You've got this. We'll give it. Okay. <laughs> 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 Wait, was it? Was it? Cut my life into pieces. Is it not that? <laughs> I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I don't actually so. know the, the title. It's of the not tune. Last Resort by Papa Roach, is it? No. Is, was that a Lady Gaga song? No, what? No, no, no. I, uh, I branch out in this game. <laughs> Um, okay. Do you want me to do it again? Yes, please. Yeah, go on. Right. I think it's a soul classic. That's why I had a go at it. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I've lost you there. I feel, uh, I feel like my musical knowledge is so Never too much, never too much. Not quite, no. <laughs> are we, are we not avoid? R E S P C T. Oh, oh no. Oh. R E S P C T. Yeah, I get it. The, 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 uh, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Does that song not go? R E S P C T. Don't know what it means to me. I thought that was an easy one to get yeah, started. That was so, a good one. Sorry, that was a really good one. Right, Should have okay. got that. Um, let's have a think. All right, well, I don't know if this is soul. It was out of... I'll give you a clue. It was out of a, a film. Cartoon. A cartoon. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for that, Gargle. <laughs> this image of you just bouncing yourself. I'm, I'm trying to stay in, in a... <laughs> The rhythm. <laughs> Any ideas? Uh, 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 what was that? I think, I think we might need a, a rerun of this. <laughs> Do you it's need so that a second time? It's so taxing on me body. I, <laughs> I think knees. so. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you look like you're doing it like Liam Gallagher. <laughs> yeah. Right, think of a, a film with fishes in it. A cartoon film with fishes in it. <laughs> Film with fishes, is it? Is it Car Wash by Rolls Royce? Thank God for that. Oh <laughs> <laughs> well done. Okay, was that, that Shark Tank or something? Shark, Shark tail. tail. Fish Tail or something, yeah. Will Smith fish. in it. How, would you, how did like you get that? I was thinking oh. of Nemo. Oh, well, the water oh, yeah, seems yeah, to clear. That's the most famous fish in the film, isn't it? <laughs> the water seemed to clear your voice oh, up for a second yeah. there. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got vocal polyps. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to hear one of your covers, you know. Oh, you have to come watch me. <laughs> I'm at Paddy and Social Club on Saturday right. night. You have to see me there. Right, right so 1-0 Lee. Um, I forgot if what you, If you get this one, Lee, I think you've won the game and I can go home to meet kids. <laughs> Which one? How many kids have you got? <laughs> oh, I've got a few. <laughs> <laughs> right, hang on. I'm going to go a little bit more generic. We'll think of the pub scene for this one. Okay. Um, right. Make it a little bit easier. Let's have a think. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to. Okay. Mm. A classic. A classic. 
<laughs> was it so I can't uh, wait for Luke to edit this video, you know. Was it uh, so Sally can wait? No, no, no. No, not quite. It's coming like, it, out of my cage and having No, no. It's along <laughs> it's along those lines. It's it's as generic as that. Sweet Caroline. I thought you'd got it at one point. I'll go for the chorus again. <laughs> 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 you need to pack in those six, mate. <laughs> Come on. I've literally got. Surely you've got that one, Lee. <laughs> Come on, Lee. He's at an advantage because he's sat right next to you. Oh, that's true, yeah. He's a sound not carrying. I've got no advantage. I can't hear the tune. He's a sound not carrying. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, can we have that one more time? Can I do it without water, please? Can you hum it? Okay. Um. Come on. <laughs> No, not even. Not even a little bit. Brown eyed girl. Oh, oh. How is that? Brown eyed girl. Oh, sha la la la. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. Yeah. Oh, hell. Oh. Ah, that's in my set list. I should have got that. <laughs> Are we doing one more or is it? One more. Just shall, shall I do a TV theme song? Yeah. Oh, go on. Make it interesting. God. Mm. Wait, but you. Yeah. Right, okay. this, is, this is one of my favourites. <laughs> <laughs> a classic. <laughs> He <laughs> said this. <laughs> there we go. Does it go? Did I get it? Yeah, you got it. You got it. Yes. Should we call it a draw there? Oh, I draw. think we call I've that had a draw. For shit. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't pay me enough to do a fifth round. <laughs> Well, well, lovely uh, to meet you, Jordy. It's been such a pleasure. Um, spread the word around Soho for me, will um, you? Yeah. It's certainly been lovely having you on again. I'll see uh, you soon. Um, uh, are we, what, what are we doing, bank transfer? or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll do bank right. transfer. Okay. And uh, where are you this weekend? Oh, I'm uh, I'm up in Aki this weekend. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah, it's, uh, Super. One of the many wonders of Lancashire. So, uh, Absolutely. I'll be getting yeah. my kit off around Aki, so I'll see you there. <laughs> right. Okay, okay I've got right. a gig, so I won't be there this oh, time. That's a shame. You, it's around. been a while, Lee. You haven't, you haven't been to many recently. Well, you know, I'm just busy. <laughs> yeah. Right, right see you soon, love. me darling. Bye. All right, see you later. <laughs> well, Jody, what did you uh, what did you make of that? She's beautiful. She's beautiful. She's so stunning. I love her. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's certainly uh, an eye-opener, isn't it, uh, when yeah. she comes on? She's quite a character, uh, Absolutely. Uh, well, we're going to welcome Luke back soon. In the meantime, Jodie, um, what are your intentions moving forward with your songwriting? Um, hopefully. I can't even be serious after that. <laughs> Oh, hi, Luke. Oh, you right? right? uh, Let's come across this weird woman outside. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> she say much? <laughs> she said a sex here was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she is a character. She tried to get me a number, but I said I'm, I'm spoken for. Oh, shame. <laughs> yeah. Shame. She gave me a business card anyway. So. Oh, yeah, I bet she did. <laughs> um, what, what was the question? Yeah. So the question was, what is your plan with your songwriting moving forward? Oh, I'm just, I think I'm just going to try and work with as many people as I can and just... Keep, keep, keep going. <laughs> keep plugging away. I can't be serious after that. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. <laughs> I've still got hair in as well. Yeah, like, uh, no, not really. You're good. There we go, there My we cheeks go. are like sore. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, no, so have you got more recording sessions planned? Yeah, I've got, um, well, um, my album's coming out next year, so, I mean, there's like seven different songs in the process, like, getting made right now, so... Yeah, it's it's doing, it's hard. Like I've got like eight different projects on at once, and like my brain is like not coping. But yeah, next year hopefully, at some point maybe like it's springtime, I'll have like an album to start out. promoting and then yeah. just get it out. Yeah, I can't wait. 
Perfect. So is it sort of all around the same sort of style or have you mixed up the tempos? Have you there's a few, you know, there's like, um, there's some that are like, the, I've got one coming out that's called Loving Her and it's about, um, <clears throat> it's like really, really stripped back and emotional. There's like, it's just me and a piano, which right, I love. Yeah. I love that. When, when singers do that, it's like one of my favourite things because you know, everybody likes to have a, their own token, like, slow song, do you know oh, what definitely, I mean? Definitely, yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited about that one. That's really nice. I suppose with your genre of music, um, you you know, you, there's upbeat, there's room for being upbeat and there's room and for there's, being slow yeah, as well. Yeah, you can take it anywhere. Yeah, it's yeah. so good. Yeah. Yeah, people want to dance to it, but they also, with, I think, within that soul remit, there was a lot of what they call divas, isn't there, where they yeah. have these big voices and when they do a ballad, it's not, like your average ballad. I mean, one one artist in slightly within that remit that I like is Alicia Keys. When oh, she yeah. went back to that sort of more loungy style where she had the band, they're doing all the stops, the ballads just don't even sound the same as what you'll get from the likes of in Adele. Yeah, I know, it's, it's crazy. That, that's what I love about the, the whole genre. Like, there's so many different, like, um, like sub-genres coming off just mm. the one, like, just soul is, like such an umbrella of <clears throat> an umbrella term for like ev like so many other different types of music so yeah i love that about it so hopefully i think there's there's a few different genres yeah within the one genre of soul in the album so super stuff should we do some quick fires i think we should we, we we usually start our quick fires with what would you tell your 16 year old self but i suppose you've not long been <laughs> two, two years four years ago <laughs> yeah. literally um when you're an old lady and you're telling your grandkids some stories of your life so far, is there any stories that stand out so far of what you've experienced that you would love to share? <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if it's one that I'd Well, you'd be share. telling your grandkids, so... Oh, telling my grandkids. Um, <laughs> uh, oh my God, quick fire, my brain don't work this fast. Um, probably... Maybe somebody you've worked with or... Oh, Brian Henry every day Okay, yeah. Week. I mean, it could be anything. I'm, I'm putting ideas in your head there just to help yeah. you out, you know. What's your best and worst gig stories? Like, this one's not really quick fire, but... Best and worst yeah. gig. Best gig stories when I was on... It was at the Coke House. I was on the bar, <laughs> <laughs> chilling. One of the... Because um, I work there as well, so me and Harry, one of the bar staff was on the bar. I was singing and he was <laughs> dancing and we was just... It was like Coyote Ugly vibes. It was amazing. Brilliant. And it's full of just, like, middle-aged women, so they like absolutely loved it um worst maybe cathedral city cheese is that yeah maybe i mean i would say that gig with you but that just feels like a bit of a that weren't that bad yeah but you were there for the whole thing well what did it get worse when i left did it well yeah not not vocally but um vibey yeah right okay what did it just start quietening down or no just everyone listening? was like play this, oh, play yeah, that. And that, I was yeah. like, I've got no signal up here. I can't even download <laughs> a song. <laughs> One second. Probably it's... Cathedral City. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, give me give me 28 minutes just to download this <laughs> yeah, one yeah. song that yeah, you want literally. me to sing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't get requests that day, but so how, how was, you say somebody tried to, did they come up the stairs to try and approach you then? Or did they come from they, the side? They came from the stairs and they came to the like bottom of the stage. Wow. And like, oh oh yeah, you got this. that. And I was like, uh, yeah, I'd love to, but. Not today. <laughs> Your, ooh, what do we go for as a next quick fire? Uh, I reckon. Um, so, is there anybody you would recommend? It could be a covers artist, it could be a solo artist, it could be a band, it could be original music, like I say, covers yeah. that you would recommend to go and check out. Um, yeah, I've got loads. But uh, okay, Co at Con13 on Instagram, she's amazing. She's one of my best friends and she's like, so good at what she does um mari jennings is really good um viviana cruz the, you, these are all people from london sophie morrow and i'm guessing they all write their own music these people yeah. yeah yeah some some on the way there's like some on the way like connie's got like five singles i think out that are like so good there's one of her songs that i listen to on repeat every morning it's that good like oh, i think it's um Oh shit, I can't remember the name of it. But Mojo Back is one of them. Mojo Back back on 13 is okay, so Okay, wicked, yeah. Yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. If there's anything you... Oh, it's, it's a difficult one for you because obviously you spend a lot of time in London, but is there anything you would change about the local music scene um, make, make something different? So, for example, one that we use quite often is there doesn't seem enough 
protection for musicians at gigs sometimes yeah. for your equipment and for just people yeah, generally true. being a knobhead and getting in your space is there anything that you Probably. would like to change about it i don't know maybe maybe that with the the money side of it i feel like you give a price to a pub and they're like that's absolute bullshit like i'm not i'm not paying that for like a thing and you just think well this is my old like my full-time job this is where my money's coming from like because I, I give i said to somebody once i usually say i usually do 250 when i'm in burnley and i'd said 300 because it was an well i was and this is this for your duo or no this was a solo oh, right, okay, i was taking yeah. the not taking the piss but i was like i'm just gonna see what they say if i do like 50 pound extra yeah and there was like um Oh, that's that's nothing. I can't believe you've even said that. That's way too much. Like, and then I was oh, like, you oh. get that back on the message, did you? Yeah, and oh, then wow. I was like, okay, so two fifty. They was like, oh yeah, I'll do that. And <laughs> I was like, so maybe I don't know. Maybe just like the money making side of it, because people don't understand that it's not like yeah. it is like a, a job, yeah. like a full time job, and it actually is work. Like it. I've it was, had yeah, I know what you mean because I've had different experience of this. Um, so the other week, I had a, there was a venue in Staffordshire. Like they put an ad out, I just tagged it, and then they approached me, and like, how much would you charge for a night? So I was like, well, bear in mind you're about an hour and twenty minutes away. Yeah. Um, I can do two fifty for the set, or I can do um, three hundred for uh, if you want me to just do a man playlist for the night. Yeah. Like, I, and then she went, what's that? I was like, well, it's like a DJ set, but I'm not a DJ, so I can't call it a DJ set. Yeah. Now I feel That's like sometimes I could, I could. I feel like probably some artists, I know no other artists that even locally charge 250 a gig. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you do feel like, because it's just acoustic guitar and vocals, you are taking the piss a bit if you charge that much. Yeah, but also it, it feels like work. Like, mm. it, is, it is work. You mm. leaving your, you're going out of your house to a venue, you're giving it a, everything. It's mm. not just that though, is it? People. It's the fact that you reserve that whole day to that yeah. gig as well. And you take your own equipment that you've bought yeah. that's cost mm. loads of money and then yeah. you play for the people and then half the time when I sing, I overdo, I over, um, I don't even sing just my set list. We do like a whole of a set because we get so buzzed yeah. and we're like, yeah, let's yeah. just play even more. I've done that before. Yeah, where we do that like majority of the time, and and it's just like it is like would and it's entertainment. You want you want to say that to like I don't know like a full on I don't know have an ex, like an ex another thing, but you wouldn't say that to like anybody else. Like if someone was anything making you like taking pictures, making your business cards, coming in yeah. to do like you wouldn't say it all to a plumber. Oh, that's a bit too much. That like, mm. I'm not gonna pay yeah. you, even though you've done all this for me. Yeah. I don't know. That was a shit excuse. But you know, no, I get you. No, I, get you. I always use the plumber one. Like, oh yeah, okay. It's like it's like asking like a plumber or a builder to come in and saying, right, I'm only paying. I'm only paying you for the actual fitting rather than all the tools and everything and that's going, going into, into it. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you ever had it before when somebody's uh, a bar owner says to you like, "Oh, if it's quiet, can I pay you a little bit less?" I've had that before. Oh, no, have you had that? Yeah, I didn't. Never it. had that. Have you not? I no. would be like, if it's a bit quieter tonight, would you mind doing it for this price? And I'm just like, no, it's so awkward to put you in that position where you're like, yeah, and "No, I'm, this is my fee," because you just sound like a diva. But at the end of the but day, I'm why such do you... a people pleaser as well? I'd be yeah, like, "Yeah, you're oh, like, oh yeah, okay, like, yeah, yeah." yeah. Was, uh, it, I would have been years ago, but now I'm like, They were never no. the same with me after that as well when I said I basically no. Um, they were never the same with me. So, but yeah, you do get stuff like that. Also as well, I feel like most places do it, but it should always be mandatory that you get a pint on the house or a drink. Oh mm. my God, yeah. Some, p- you- some places, it, you, it's that awkward transaction where you don't want to go, oh, I'm the singer, by the way. Yeah. And they just yeah. don't offer it you and you're just like, bastard. Give us a pint. I need yeah, to loosen yeah. myself up a bit. Yeah. Oh, what's the one? Yeah. Or I, just- always, I always... Um, like start a tab so then like by the end of it i'm like oh i need to pay that tab and then if they're like oh we'll only do you half i'm like buzzing. yeah or they're just oh. like yep sound <laughs> yeah i'm like yeah i'll take it take it off my wage <laughs> i think yeah i think the other thing is like where they try and play the whole oh would you mind doing this much as your first gig i'm like well, well yeah, if you're to gonna book you're me if, what i want you to do now is i want you to book me for three or four yeah but we're gonna do them more expensive but like, yeah, why does it matter? They've seen the videos. They obviously think you're good enough to perform in the pub. Why yeah, Why right. is it an introductory yeah. fee? Yeah, that's, I've never had that before, but I can imagine that's like such a piss take. Like, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It's, I, it is, it is like, and bands are the worst. Like when it's bands, it's the worst because like you've got five cars that you're bringing with all this yeah, full equipment. Yeah, bands are hard as well. And they're like, oh, we've only got a budget of 250. 
what well, do you want me to do? That's like 50 quid each. Like, yeah. that's nothing, is it? Yeah, it's a difficult to buy. And plus, it's like, I could do it. You could, like, do a normal job. Like, I don't know where I was going in that full process. <laughs> do you ever get it where you start speaking and then you're like, yeah, where oh, am yeah. I going? Yeah, yeah. Time, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a bit. But what would you charge as a band anyway? Like, like the minimum for a pub gig is 350 but generally we only lo do local. If yeah. it goes for a wedding, and obviously you've got to factor in the extra yeah. time you're in the venue and everything's very specific, whether you get a first dance added on and stuff like that. So there is... There is yeah, there's so much like to factor in whether they want you just down the aisle or the drinks reception. Yeah, or, there's loads of weddings. Yeah, yeah, because because we always say like start price four hundred at weddings because it's only two of us. But then it's also like you say four hundred and then they add just a little like oh, yeah. this and they're like, can you just do this and for the same price? And you just think, well, you're taking the piss a bit now. Have you ever <laughs> been stung with this at weddings where? You, you have to turn. You, you don't realise until like the day that you've got to basically turn up and set up before the wedding starts, and then come back later on. I've been stung by that before, where it's like, oh yeah, by the way, um, you can't. You, you can only access this room in the morning. Your gig might be at night, and there was one gig. It was like half an hour away, so I had to do an out and back trip to just to set up, no, that's then come so back nice. home. And all, oh, it's like they no. like you say, weddings are tough to. I, I hate pricing up weddings. Obviously, yeah, they're good, same. but I hate pricing them up. There's so many questions you have to ask. Yeah, and, and people was... don't want to answer them, do do they? No, and it's so annoying when they they don't even care yeah. for the music. Like they'll, I'm like, so what songs would you like? So we did one where. Um, um, they give us songs down the aisle, but then they'd never give us any for like whilst they were signing the register or whilst they was leaving, which yeah. is like usually an ideal like, deal. If we say like we're doing a yeah. ceremony, we do down the aisle, yeah. signing and back up the aisle because that's just what you do. Yeah. And they was like, oh, well, we only have one song that we want down the aisle. We don't, we don't really care what you do mm -hmm. for the rest of the time. And I was like, how would it, imagine if I started playing like somebody's bloody funeral song yeah. or something. Yeah. You don't even know like, how, well, what, what, how am I supposed to gauge that? It was so difficult. ACDC or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, she had her way to hell down oh, the aisle. Right, so, oh, really? Yeah, she did. Awesome. That is Weird. class, actually. I, know, I like that. It was quite funny. <laughs> no way. Right, okay. Right, is there anything you'd like to finish off with, Jodie? Any anybody you'd like to give a shout out or a message you'd like to give to somebody what about somebody starting up in this in this musical world who's wanting to get into it would you give any advice to them maybe um i would just say probably uh make relationships with like even just like bars like as soon as that sounds like make relationships with like pub owners because that's how you get the word out i think anyway like i only got my first gig because i was really friendly with the bar manager and he gave me that gig and then that stemmed so many other gigs so probably that and just um just remember that everything you, the person that you put out in like the like whoever you put out wait what am i saying <laughs> um like just be the person that you would want like a producer to meet or like yeah. like I would have if I was an arsehole to you that first day that I met you I would have never got this because no, you would have been like what an true. arsehole yeah. so it's like yeah. treat, treat you everything you do come like across a... people that are a bit like that sometimes in this music game don't you yeah. that are a bit got a bit of an air about them so yeah I would say that it's like treat everybody yeah. with like a business mindset definitely over, 100% maybe brilliant right thanks yeah. for coming on Jodie it's Thank been a, it's been so a good much. one I've really enjoyed it so uh yeah Big thanks. And, uh, oh, actually, before we finish, yeah. Um, so by the time this episode comes out, your tune should be out as well. Oh, really? So what we'll do is for, we only released, um, we only put original music at the end of our episodes on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It's a yeah. bit of a copyright thing with YouTube. Um, so if you want to introduce your song, we can play it at the end of our um, audio podcast episode. So if you're just listening and you're not watching us, introduce your tune and we'll play it for you to finish. Oh, my God, this is so yeah, exciting. Yeah. Okay, this is um, I've Been Blue. Written by me, Jody Woods, and Liam Robinson. Enjoy. Oh, 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 oh,